Hello there, I am Taylor, and you are listening to the Surviving Maine Podcast. Today, I am talking with the player voted out on episode 9 of Surviving Maine Season 3. A little bit of a blind side, but then again, not really. But we'll hear more about that in this interview. Here it is, my interview with William. William, it's so nice to talk to you. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great. How about yourself? Oh, I'm fantastic. But I wasn't just voted out of Surviving Maine. (laughs) (laughs) Well, honestly, I'm happy I made it as far as I did. Mm -hmm. Uh, Obviously, just like not a hot take. I think I could have gone further. Um, but as I'm, just, uh, I, as I will elaborate as we talk, um, I think it didn't also surprise me um, that much when I went home the way I did. So, yeah. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Um, when, well, first of all, why? How did you hear about Surviving Maine, and why did you apply? Yeah. So. Uh, for those who don't know me, I've been involved with uh, Survival Challenge, another live reality game since 2016. Um, and in 2017, uh, a familiar person by the name of Liza um, played <laughs> in Maine there. And so I actually filmed uh, her playing. And then um, I don't know when you guys started. It wasn't long after that that Liza started surviving Maine. I think 2018 um, she started, yeah. So the next year, goodness, yeah, really wasn't that long at all. And I always wanted to play Survival Challenge first, but I always knew that I wanted to play more after that. And I always had Surviving Maine in the back of my mind as one of my go-to ones. Um, And I hope you take that as like a compliment because I am actually pretty picky about what ones I even (laughs) want to pursue because I don't see this being like there's some like I don't know like what you would call them like allergy professionals who make like a crazy hobby of doing this and doing multiple allergies a year even more orgs and stuff and I I just don't know how they do it for yeah. me I I put a lot of time and energy and thought into the games I play and I only do like one allergy and one org a year at this point I keep it very minimal and I try to keep them really sweet and special I think that they really blend together when you do a lot I know I did a lot during the pandemic when I did have a crazy amount of free time and nothing else to do but now that things are basically back to normal it is not that way anymore and I certainly can't take that much time to do this kind of stuff but I love it nonetheless and I really want to make the most of every opportunity that I get and I uh, thought so surviving Maine would be a great one uh to invest my time and energy into was that just because you knew Liza and knew how they felt like about uh their you know passion for live games or or was it Mm -hmm. um had you seen the 2019 version well what I will say is that one of the things that survival challenge prides itself on is integrity the game and the spirit of the game and just the mentality behind it and the reasons for creating a game in the first place and I do have a little bit of biasness towards liking this because of Liza, but part of that is because I know that she shares the same values. And so that made it a much easier sell. I could have easily figured that out, especially being from the New England area that later on, but I basically didn't even need to question it. Like I just (laughs) knew it right off the bat. So um, I'd say I had more of a shortcut to knowing that this was one of the right ones for me rather than having a biasness of, a unfair positive uh, view on this. I feel like it was plenty earned and not just because I happen to know someone in the game. Yeah, yeah, no, I think all of us on production were really obsessed with the integrity of the game. So I agree with that. Yeah, and then, um, so after I played, which was in 2019, I think applications for the season went up later that year. Mm -hmm. Um, I applied then, and got accepted. I was really hyped. And then, oops, pandemic happens. Yeah. 
uh, things get, you know, postponed. Um, I, I feel bad. I really did bug Liza. A lot. I don't know <laughs> where I stood as far as people bugging her about it, but like, I definitely was nudging quite a bit about like, hey, we still doing this? Like, what's it happen? Because I was just like, I refuse to apply to other games until this happened because mm. I was just like, no, I'm in this game. I want this to be my next game. Like, I had my mind and heart set on it. <laughs> and so I just didn't want to really apply for anything else or do anything else. Um, and literally just when I was about to give up hope, Liza was just like, yeah, so you still in? I'm like, well, <laughs> well yeah, absolutely. It's like, okay, we're playing in like a few months. I'm like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. So it's just like out of nowhere, it's like, all right, we're finally doing this thing. Um, and I had watched season two in preparation for everything, um, which was a lot of fun to watch. Um, and I thought that I was also very encouraged by the level of, because one thing I didn't know was the level of competition. Mm -hmm. And I think that the reason why I wasn't concerned about that before applying was just simply because I know a good game brings good competition naturally. Yeah. But I truthfully was like encouraged to see how hard people were playing in season two and the level of competitiveness and uh, shenanigans and whatnot. It was mm -hmm. very entertaining to watch and um, I was very uh, happy. And also as someone who like works on like the video production side of things, kudos to your team and everything that you guys do there you guys do a phenomenal job putting that together it's one hell of a job and I know you're going through the ringer right now for I my am. season but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah so much uh much appreciated uh for the work that you guys put into that it's a very underrated uh, job thank um, you I appreciate it yeah um I think I also listened to a few episodes of the podcast as I was watching stuff I can't remember which ones I listened to though because cool. that I was doing on like drives home and I was like half listening not because I was in wasn't interested it would switch from me listening to me thinking about something that was said on the podcast to yeah. like I, I rant in my own head about like what I think about that should I apply it and all this kind of stuff but um basically I get very obsessed and this is one of the reasons why I don't play many games I get very obsessed about thinking about this everything I should do and everything I should prep for I do a lot of mental prep work and thinking about things and I had years to prep from being on production for a survival challenge mm. and weirdly enough I feel like I did more intense and more time because because of the pandemic and stuff between me playing survival challenge to this because it was another couple no it was three years yeah so it was around the same amount of like actual time between prepping for games weirdly enough but this time hmm. I feel like I was very humbled in my survival challenge experience and looking back I wish I had played at least one org leading up to it because so your first um, orgs were yeah during the pandemic then yes so post okay. survival challenge was my first survivor game of anything and then after that I played a good handful of orgs and immediately felt like, wow, I'm learning so much. And I feel like I immediately dwarfed my understanding of the game because I feel like it's so easy for people to sit on the couch and watch Survivor and have takes about what they should and shouldn't do. But when you're out there, there's so many factors that you just don't consider. A big one of them is just that your mental capabilities are different out there in the game. Like, it is so easy for you to be well-fed, comfortable, which is a super underrated thing, comfortable, dry, no pressure of people watching, no pe pressure of people judging you and thinking about what you're thinking about and that kind of stuff, and to think about what the perfect move is to make. When you're in the game, it's a whole different ball game, and you realize very quickly how easy it is to do really stupid-ass things. In the game. <laughs> <laughs> and I did several in my survival challenge game, and mm -hmm. I feel like even though I obviously still continue to do this, I had lots more success. And I think one thing that I really learned is that um, no matter what strategy you think the best is to use in like Survivor, it's not about what strategy and what game is the best to play in Survivor. Yes, there's some keystones and things that you should always keep in mind, some classic do's and don'ts. But ultimately, you are destined to play a certain archetype of player and that may kind of bum some people out of like 
oh, but like, I want to like pretend to be this or like, <laughs> you know, like explore myself and like, there is avenues like things like Dungeon and Dragons um, and other like good role playing things yeah. that even mm-hmm. I've taken part of. And I think it's easy to get Survivor mixed in with that. And it truthfully isn't that. I think if anything, Survivor really has a way of bringing out your true self forward. And so the more of that you hold back, the harder you're going to be struggling because you're realizing that your biggest enemy isn't the people that's trying to vote you out. It's yourself and trying to get your character straight, get Mm -hmm. your lies and your truth straight and your feelings about everything. And you're going to quickly have conflictions about what you want as a character in this game and what you want as a human in this game. Um, And that's quickly going to get just yourself into trouble. Um, I think we've seen it sometimes in Survivor where people want to be savage. They want to just like go for the window at all. And then they have these lapses of um, just like compassion. Like I think like literally the most classic one that I literally just watched recently, I was rewatching All Stars season eight. So spoiler for All Stars if you <laughs> haven't seen that and you care about that for some reason. But when Lex came in, he was literally in such a mindset that is very rare to see that early on survivor where he was so locked into the game and he is a man and i relate to that so much where you could tell his mind never left africa he was so focused on knowing despite it never happening up to this point (laughs) knowing that when he comes back he was going to play his heart out and it was going to be all strategy was going to be brutal was going to be savage and he wasn't going to play like he did uh in africa and then he succeeds through that and he finds good momentum. And then the moment that suddenly he has compassion for a bro helping out his girl, boom, game's over mm-hmm. that quickly. And he's just a mess, you mm-hmm. know? Um, and I think that it's a very telling story of that kind of confliction of like what you want to do and what you actually are. So I think the best thing is just utilizing your natural strengths, not just thinking that like, Oh, I'm pigeonholed to be this type of character or this. And that doesn't seem fun. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, I think that you just need to, you, you know who you are as a person and utilize what you need to win with what the tools that you're given. It's kind of like, if you're, um, for some reason, I reference poker a lot when it comes to freaking Survivor. I don't know. I don't know if they're good analogies or not. But you are given a different hand to play in like poker than other people, even though you innately may have a harder or easier hand to win with, does not make your odds greater or better based off of the dynamic of the game of bluffing. It's and... how people per- people perceive you more exactly. than anything. Exactly. So I think that you can't feel discouraged by feeling like, so for me, I know that one of my biggest problems is is that I come out someone, I come out as someone who is very obviously social, Mm -hmm. very easy to talk to, but also easy to talk and make good speeches. One of my biggest strengths is that I'm really good about seeing the positives Mm. in things. I'm good about bringing the positives in people and situations and putting a positive twist on basically anything I have to say. And I know that makes me dangerous in a final tribal council kind of situation. I've played orgs with people who have voted me off telling me that like, we were really scared about you getting DN because Mm -hmm. we felt like even if we had a better game, you would find a way to talk to the jury and make them feel like, you had you had it right all along even though i was greatly exaggerating a lot of things i just can sometimes make it very believable and sometimes it's too exaggerated where it's not believable (laughs) but it's still a scary thing to play with um oh yeah that's that's fair and i think that uh people in surviving maine saw that there are some confessionals of people not trusting you because you're too smooth of a talker so yeah yeah i also weirdly enough one of the biggest conceptions about me is that I'm a confident person. Mm-hmm. I have a weird thing where I people see this quality in me that they think is confidence, which isn't confidence at all. I'm really um, kind of a go-getter 
combined with someone who's very impatient about <laughs> indecision. Not just I'm I'm actually a very patient person, but I'm very impatient about indecision. So basically, if we have a group of people that can't decide on something, that's when suddenly I have no patience and I need and I decide that I'll make the decision. I'll be the bad guy. I don't care. I want things to move along. I want things to progress. I want us to keep moving forward as an individual, as a group, as a team, whatever. I'm going to cook all the rice. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I just, I never mind those opportunities. So I think people see that as confidence, like, wow, Will's a guy that knows what he wants. Not really. I just know that we need to do something. And I don't Mm -hmm. mind being the person who says the thing that we're all thinking, you know, Mm -hmm. but those are all things that can be seen as threats. And I need to not worry about how can I, get rid of these things how can i make it so these things don't exist so people don't see me like no 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 no. i need to you know that those things are strengths for me as a mm-hmm. player and figure out how to utilize that in a way that can be conducive to a survivor game mm-hmm. you know um and um one of the biggest things that i really really felt committed to as far as strategy coming into this game was i need to shut up <laughs> like literally like i need to stop talking so much because i can have those skills and not openly present them so willingly yeah. if i just talk less you know um i got myself into trouble at camp all the time in survival challenge because i knew so much about survival challenge being in the background that i in my head i'm like i want to show my value i want to show that i'm someone worth keeping around and show them all the secrets and what they could be doing in this game who knows what's funny is that i was terribly wrong if you watch this season <laughs> my my reads were so off and it goes to show how good that production is there but i was just so wildly off so i really had no value at all when it came to that um but reality was is that everyone was looking at me he's like wow here's a guy who clearly has been thinking and strategizing since before we got here and if anyone's gonna pull some crap it's gonna be will and that was all just because I wouldn't shut up. So I was like, okay, rule number one, Will needs to stop talking so much because all those great things that I talked about it that can be seen as a threat can be downplayed by just not talking so much. Be a man of fewer words. Like it really Will, was that, that simple. Was Surviving Man you being a man of fewer words? Believe it or not, yes. <laughs> I know it doesn't look like it. I think me being a man of fewer words is just someone who just has a normal amount of words to say oh compared to everyone else. <laughs> now, now that being said, from your point of view, you're seeing professional stuff like that. I'm sure. I'm back to like spewing words and just as I am here, you know. So um, you, that was like an outlet game, for you. But in, yes. in 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 at like at camp, you weren't ever the one taking over conversations. Yes. That is true. Yeah. Um, in fact, there was many times in camp when I wanted to be that person to say something because of that thing I talked about, about the impatience towards indecision and wanting to be that person to say, I would literally challenge everyone. It's like, all right, we're going to do this. I don't care. I'm not talking. We're going to make this awkward as hell. Like, <laughs> I don't care. Like, I literally thought that out loud in my head and just being like, cool, this is what we're doing. This is totally when I would speak up, but I'm not doing it. I don't care. I'm not going to risk my game for these little moments Mm. of just speaking up because I feel awkward. Because honestly, I recognize the awkwardness in the air, but I don't care about it because there's implications to my game. So really, it just feels like spite. Like, nah, uh, you're not getting me with this. I'm just going to just not add anything to this moment. And that'll be that. Um, which weirdly doesn't have many repercussions. Um, it's amazing how many more repercussions you have for talking than not talking. Mm. Um, Cause sometimes you feel like you need to say something. Sometimes you get caught in a lie or you just lie or you do something suspect and you feel like you have to talk out your ass to prove that you didn't lie or didn't do something suspect. When actually, really the truth is always simple. Keep it cool, keep it light. And that's just how it is, you know? Um, I also, the, so the number one thing, and we'll get to the beginning game in just a second, I promise. But like <laughs> the preparation is a big thing for me. So it is important mm-hmm. to set these things up. Um, the number one, the shutting up bit, that was like a keystone of thinking that I had going into it, of things that I need to change about me going into this to better utilize my natural skills. Um, 
but two, I needed to, was it? Um, was number one, was, it, was the shutting up? That was, <laughs> what was the other one? Crap. Um, it was, Okay. While I try to remember that, yeah. <laughs> the other thing that I want to say is that there was a funny pregame interaction, which mm -hmm. is me and Justin were talking about orgs, games in general. And a while ago, we talked about how there was this game that like, like, hey, are like, you going to play any games? Like, yeah, I have one on the docket for this year. We were purposely being nondescript and stuff like that. And then we basically after through a line of dialogue found out that we were playing a live game in the same month and then we were immediately like we should stop talking about this because it could be the same game and yeah so like okay that happened it was online super brief all kind of not like off the shoulder like super like low-key thing i kind of forgot about it and then like there was something as coming up to the game that I felt like something tells me that Justin's going to be in this game. I don't know what, but there's this weird nagging in my head that Justin's going to be in this game. And the funniest thing was, is that literally days before this game, um, Survivor 42, the finale was airing and Justin right. was hosting a watch party in Boston. Um, and so I went to that and part of me wanted to just test the waters with Justin to see if I could, somehow get him to say something without saying anything myself about him doing something next weekend I think it was literally like the weekend before something like that um and what was funny is that we had like uh like this survival challenge reunion thing happening in Maine um and I wanted because I knew that he said he probably wasn't coming but I wanted to say like hey um because um okay so it was two weeks before because i remember that the reunion was the week between so as i was leaving i thought really hard and i just i decided not to because that would just be mean but i thought i was like hey so i'll see you in maine next right <laughs> and just like even though i knew he like almost 100 percent wasn't coming to this reunion um i wanted to see if his third first thought was not about this thing that he mm. said he might go to but was the lrg and he'd be like what i want to see if i could pull a reaction out of him and then I would follow up with like for the reunion, right? And then he'd be like, "Oh no, I'm not going." He's like, "Oh, okay. I guess I'll see you when I see it." I didn't end up doing that, but I really wish I did just to see what his reaction is. What is funny is that when I showed up to the game itself, first thing, first person I see when I pull in is literally Justin, who was already checked in, sitting down. And I remember getting out of my car, and like I literally just wanted to share the most brief eye contact with him. And I remember closing my door. He kind of glanced over. I saw him. And I, I don't know, maybe I just did like a quick nod or something like that. No, I didn't nod. I'm pretty sure I like smirked or something and just like <laughs> let that be that. And then just walked to the table and checked in. But I was just like, all right, Justin is here. Uh, this will be interesting. Um, because if, for those who don't know, me and Justin not only played the same game together in Survival Towns, we were on the same tribe together and we voted for each other. <laughs> I was the one who got voted out, but I yeah. did vote for him. He voted for me. <clears throat> so there there's some history there for sure um so yeah man what is that other thing i was hoping that i would <laughs> randomly think of it when i was telling that story but there is definitely one other key piece um wow that's really gonna bug me i really have well, like two i can edit it if you yeah. if it comes to you i will chop it back, sure. right, back in there <laughs> sure. ask me a question before I, I get into the beginning of the game um so what I want to ask that is out of order is do you think that knowing people not just Justin but John and Jess and Sam do you think that was a hindrance to your game in any way yes and no um I found out from one of the people no hmm I would say, ultimately, yes, it was a hindrance. Um, I think it worked out for the better with me and Justin. Things were very awkward between each other through our entire tenure um, playing the game. However, I think that 
Jess and Michael both had preconceived negative things about me yeah that would be that was basically impossible for me to overcome within the game it was based off of what they had to say which is really really disappointing because they're viewing my first survivor anything game and which i laugh at now and have completely ignored all the many orcs that i've played since then where i have become a vastly different player and one of the biggest things that they took from it was that i was just simply someone who was too chaotic to trust right and i really just don't play like that anymore i know i got a lot of attention and a lot of flack for being a super chaotic player in my early days but frankly i got tired of just getting attention for things that just bit me in the ass i wanted (laughs) to play to win i wanted to be the smart player i wanted to be the mastermind you know um and so i really was kind of done with that and then like i know it's in my natural being to want to trust people to want to work with people to befriend people and i just really didn't really feel the need to make any big schemes or lying unless if it was like in the final act when i know i was going home or something like that yeah. like i really feel like especially in the pre-merge of the game i was really trying to focus on playing a very clean and trustworthy game because i feel like if i really do want to do conniving stuff you can't just do it you have to earn mm-hmm. the respect and trust of other players to actually make them successful mm-hmm. um and I feel like even though I didn't utilize that, I feel like I did with the people who didn't have those preconceived notions. I feel like I did earn a lot of trust and respect from the people who didn't know me prior to this game. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. Um, I know when I, I'm pretty sure it was with you when I had my like opening interview. It was, right? yeah. And I was talking about my strategies and it's so funny uh, looking back uh, about like what I had to say um, seeing how the game shaped up but just like I um, wanted to basically wanted my moves to be like under the radar moves but not in ways that we've seen before like I wanted to purposely stay away from from moves that are like attention magnets and I wanted to do moves that wouldn't be seen into final tribal council um, and that doesn't mean writing coattails. That doesn't mean um, anyone but me strategies. It means things like if I get an advantage, getting giving it to someone to garner trust. You know, trust is a very, very valuable currency in Survivor. And one of my goals was to garner as much of that currency as possible. Um, and so I literally said, I was like, hey, if I get advantage, I get idols. I think that I have a better shot of actually winning this game by utilizing that to get trust and respect from other players rather than using it for myself to keep myself in the game so i I want to really i want to really talk about this because um you did and in some confessionals you talked about this and then you did something with delaney and all of that had to be cut out of the episode so no one's gonna know this this is just (laughs) like you sounding like you wanted to play someone else's game maybe so let's talk about this because this is true you laid all of this out in several confessionals and you took the only action available to you which was the only advantage that you ever got in the game which was um the fire token that no one explained even us camera people had no fucking clue about these things (laughs) Liza just (laughs) did this and didn't tell anyone uh so everyone was confused by it why don't you let's start from there because that's day one tell us what happened with that (laughs) so going through my bag as I'm sitting there I see that we have this token and I'm trying to remember what I had on it but I'm I want to say it had fire on it. It did. It looked like a fire token. Yeah. Okay. So like, I'm literally like, it is a token. It has fire. Um, (laughs) Did it even have a number on it? Like, did it have a number one on it? Like, I don't know. No, I I, I feel like I'm imposing even more stuff to make it seem (laughs) like a fire token. But literally I was like, there wasn't a moment that I didn't think it was a fire token. Like it was just a fire token. And we weren't that far from season 40 of Survivor. So I was like, okay, fire tokens recent you know like what's funny is that we went for a more recent recent uh twist thing with the tokens and stuff but (laughs) so i um 
had this uh this token and i uh immediately it was like okay here's my first thing to give out which i thought it it was a very like small step into doing it because i said i was willing to give out idols that's survivor gold i feel like handing out a token is the equivalent of handing out a extra coconut you know like it's <laughs> oh wow thanks that's cool buddy ultimately not worth a whole lot like but if anything it's the only one i have and it's a sign of trust uh, and it's a way of putting more than just words to action um and i know the type of people that i can work with well and i find that um like females my age tend to gel well with my strategy Mm. and my vibes and i really just like as a general thing, just growing up, I just always have gotten along better just because I don't feel like I'm a stereotypical like guy. Like it's a running gag that anytime I play an org, the, one of the big plot twists about my game is when people find out that I'm straight. Um, <laughs> Will, I, I thought I, you were I, gay. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not kidding. I, I'm not yeah. making this up. The thing I was is, like, like rooting for you. I was like, oh, I like the gay guy with the blue hair. <laughs> and then I and then I find out you're engaged to a woman. I'm like, oh dang it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Like I'm not even bi. Like I'm not even a little gay. Um I'm sorry and... for you. You're missing no, out. <laughs> <laughs> I totally get it. I am just very confident in my personality. Um, yeah. my upbringing um was very like as someone who grew up like in the woods in a conservative christian environment mm. i was like back when like like being called gay was an insult you yeah. know like i was scared to dye my hair because mm. back in like the mid 2000s the only thing yeah. that guys would do was bleach their hair if you dyed your hair then like that would be just oh he's gay like a no question kind of thing um and so i was like were to even do that as a kid and literally as a kid I wanted to have red hair just because I thought it was cool. <laughs> just how like people thought like the bleach hair trend was really cool. I don't know what my inspiration was, but I was like, my red is my favorite color. I want red hair because I think it's badass. <laughs> and I sat on that until I was a late teen where I just stopped giving a crap about what people thought about my orientation and whatnot. <laughs> um, and like, even if like people think I'm gay or call me gay now, it doesn't have the same implication and I just don't care. Um, yeah. And it's um it's it's funny just looking back about why I was so scared of such a like a simple thing and why I was even worried about what people thought of me in that way but like truthfully like like kids today won't know like like what an actual diss it was yeah as like a man who you're being told right. in this environment of like you need to be a macho man you know mm-hmm. you gotta you're like hunting you gotta like fishing you know and all these <laughs> kinds of things I just did not care and so um i've never truthfully gelled with the stereotypical like straight males Mm -hmm. like and so i've always found a better connection um like with females my age for that reason and then uh, especially for just when you're trying to find quick bonds and things to get over i think that that is something that you have to know your strengths when it comes to quick relationships what really pops off for you you Mm -hmm. know um because when I, you know, see the guys that I have close relationships with now, they're they're also not stereotypical guys as well. So I know that the odds of me finding a non-stereotypical guy that I will vibe with are much lower than finding a girl who like those things, those weird macho things that guys weirdly care about <laughs> just aren't a thing. So long story short, that is um, kind of the people that I at least look at first and then go from there and i see two people that catch my eye i see uh delaney because first off she immediately um like i noticed that like um she had really cool i think she had converse or vans or something like that I yeah could okay. be wrong. yeah she had something <laughs> like that she had tattoos mm-hmm. um and she had a vibe of like adventure And just something that like, okay, here is someone who likes to do fun things and to share experiences with. I feel like this is someone that I'm really going to like vibe with and immediately was like, this is the person that I need to like get out 
and stake my claim of like I'm bonded with you like mm-hmm. and I want to make this as obvious in as clear as day as possible um and so that's why you know we were getting firewood and I purposely took myself some people may think this is stupid I think this is brilliant I purposely would tell people that like I'm getting firewood and I would be coming back and forth from camp and doing stuff but I wasn't trying to be with people because I wanted to know right off the bat who was interested in talking with me I know who I want to talk about. That's not a mystery. Who wants to talk with me? And so I'm going by myself and I'm waiting as people naturally see me alone and wanting to take that time to talk with me. What transpires? I'm like, cool. Um, and so when I get that opportunity with Delaney, the first one I want, that's, that's when we talk, we connect, and I immediately like, here you go. What's really funny is that Delaney didn't even have her token yet. Oh, you didn't know so, that before you gave it to her no not at all but she's just extra just taken aback and like where did you get this like (laughs) i thought everyone had one either way here you go um and she thought that was great um another person i also really vibed with was andy and i think one of the biggest things was just because he's got dad vibes and like wholesome (laughs) major dad dad vibes vibes, (laughs) and i that is a that is a, a a type of guy that i vibe with uh, I can't wait to be a dad. Um, oh. And um, that's something I really look forward to in life. And I not only saw him as like a dad, but like the a type of dad that I would want to be. And mm-hmm. so I immediately was like, here is a guy that I can really buy with. So I immediately was making as much eye contact with him throughout the days that I can and just getting to talk with him. And then I think we even had a conversation between me Andy and Delaney of three of us of making like a, like a strong three there. Mm-hmm. Um, um, in the very beginning of the day, as you know, we're walking together and we're getting together for um, the, this both, like we've seen a lot of shenanigans in season two with like shared idols and things like that. <laughs> what transpired for our tribe was so freaking silly. Um, so I, <laughs> I remember I was like thinking I was either looking to set something down or looking to sit down and I happened to look behind our flag and I saw this little sack behind our flag and I'm like oh my gosh that's like an advantage or something and I'm literally just staring at it which is a dumb thing to do you shouldn't be drawing attention to something like that and not doing anything about it if you're going to if you're going to look at it and you want to take it just take it don't stall you got to make it quick and dirty and done but I did not do that. I was just dumbfounded looking at it, thinking, do I grab this? It might as well have been a danger advantage because that's what I was looking at it like. Like, mm. do I want this or do I want because what are, like, am I ready to risk my game right off the bat by grabbing an advantage? And the last thing I need, basically the way I see it is like my natural persona is someone who is going to be a threat. The last thing I need is a single advantage, anything that gives me extra leverage in this game to make me as a bona fide no question threat and that's what something like that does so i'm like i can't i I don't know if i can do that and then i see as i'm like thinking about this crazy you know the numbers uh in the like that gif that everyone posts like are flying by my head like man (laughs) what do i do do?" and then um trisha i don't know if she saw it or Mm -hmm. was what but she literally just kind of like crept her like little (laughs) hand behind the flag and was like feeling up the back of the flat. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh, now Trish is going for it. Yeah. What do I do? Do I try to steal it from her? And like, keep in mind, this whole moment's like five seconds, but this yeah. whole thing is like a five minute thing in my head because I'm thinking a mile an hour. Um, a mile an hour. I'm thinking way faster than that. <laughs> <laughs> and then what's so crazy? So I've seen it. Trish has seen it, I assume, or is at least going for it. And then Andy's like, hey, look, an idol. <laughs> Grabs it. And I, and I, I'm just like, completely dumbfounded by what just happened and uh i think Andy <laughs> basically immediately announced hey guys find an idol uh, it'll mm-hmm. be a shared idol you know it's for the tribe and it's like it's season two <laughs> all over again oh my gosh and i was like annoyed for not grab i wasn't annoyed about not grabbing it i was annoyed that i allowed this dumb scenario to happen again because it was a mess when yeah. it happened in season two and i was like i don't <laughs> want this to happen again and now i'm a part and i'm just like oh my gosh so that was lovely. Um, 
so we already know that advantage is out there. Um, I also see that um, Sam, Samantha, is on her tribe, uh, which I knew because she was also a past survival challenge player. We hadn't had a real personal connection, but we knew each other. We were acquaintances. And so I immediately uh, went for that. And also I know that Samantha is a person that I would vibe with in a scenario like this was immediately trying yes. to utilize that. But also one of the reasons why she was never one of my closest allies is because I was specifically trying to work with people who didn't know me previously because mm -hmm. I knew that the the preconceived notions about my play style was always going to be a potential problem. And so I was like, I didn't want to put all my eggs in a basket of someone who has seen me before, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's why I was more leaning on Delaney and Andy. So we get, we, we are doing the end of the challenge together and that's when we start talking about things and it was, the vibes were just so great. We were like talking, it was so nice to immediately feel like I could talk openly with someone and not feel like judgment and stuff. So that, that yeah. was really great. You we start you hitting. To, you're talking about the fire the three no. of you doing the fire in the challenge well, oh i'm nope. sorry this is the uh the one that finished with like the the cornhole thing oh okay okay oh you and yeah. sam were at that table together yeah. gotcha, gotcha yeah so we're just like watching everyone cheering everyone on and then just like not looking at each other but just kind of like low-key talking as we're like <laughs> watching everyone. like i um yes. so we're, we're being sneaky about that um and so um really just feeling out what we want and we're like bam we're working together like that solidifies so cool i have someone that i know i'm gonna use and then working on delaney working on andy and so i'm like working on other things trisha seemed like uh like a decent candidate um who who else was i like potentially like thinking of i knew that i think the only person that i immediately was like mm, i don't know uh was dan mm -hmm. um and i just like i don't know like there was nothing wrong about him i was just like i don't know if i can connect with this guy yeah and it was the only person that i feel like i didn't have a lot of hope for connecting with so i was like mm, not not the best um and then i guess the only others would be mike and jess who you knew yes. right yeah and so those were people I'm like okay cool i can utilize them but again not putting my hope in that because i don't know how they feel about me we all three met together. We all played Pandora together. So we were like, hey, Pandora crew, what's up? Um, and that was fun. Um, but, uh, and I thought what's crazy is that like, especially like, I know like Mike had a vendetta against me. And even though like Jess didn't have as much of a vendetta against me, I feel like she had a harsher take on me than Mike did, interestingly enough, yeah. which is weird because we worked together she voted me off when we played together. And then despite that, I still voted for her to win in the org that we oh. played together. So I feel like she shouldn't feel like there was any, I, I didn't, I did some like, like kind of chaotic stuff in that game, but it was never towards her. Mm. And, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm forgetting stuff, but I don't feel like I deserved any of the total harshness that she gave me. I was, I was very, disheartened by that um, uh, well, i don't know that she was hard well i think maybe we'll get to it in a minute yeah because we'll, dan, we'll dan blows your game up and that is when it's like mike and jess are like i believe dan because will is chaotic and everyone else is like i don't think right. so <laughs> but they because they knew you right automatically thought that it was you doing the right. bad stuff um quick things like as like the game is going on it immediately becomes apparent that sam is on the outs for like basically no discernible reason yeah. i was very perplexed by this still am i don't really know why i think she just literally got the short end of the mm -hmm. stick i know there was a small stigma about her working with the game previously but like it's not i know personally that really doesn't add much it's not that if anything especially early on the game that's an asset exactly you want to think yeah. about that as a threat later on the game i don't know why freaking first vote that is what you do but i remember probably the saddest moment of that first day was just we found a moment where we were at just camp together and she's like well i'm on the bottom and i don't know how i got here and i don't know how to get out i don't know what to do and i felt bad because i i was feeling that and so her saying that like confirmed like oh wow she is on the bottom because if i was feeling that and now she feels that that's a done deal 
And I should be happy because like, cool, I'm on the bottom. I'm in a better spot. You know, I know what's going on. My reads on the tribe are right. But like, this is someone that I have a unique bond with. You know, I know no one else like probably has a, a better like pregame bond with her than me. And it's very stupid of my game to vote her out immediately. And so mm-hmm. ultimately, I'm also just like, I know how much she cares about the game. She's a very passionate person like myself. And I was like, I want her to go far in this game. So it was very hard to see her this um, disheartened about her situation. And so I'm thinking about like, how, how can I turn this on literally anyone mm-hmm. but Sam? But that being said, I wasn't about to throw my game away from her. Uh, oh, away just for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So um, when we get into that first like tribal like council challenge, um, I remember that like we were just it was very awkward. I think this was one of the times where I spoke up. I probably was the one who suggested this that we go off into like one on one groups. You did, yeah. Because they... cool. <laughs> like I felt like if there was a chance for me to change this away from Sam, it would happen like this. Because if it stayed a group conversation, <laughs> we were going to do the easy thing. And everyone knows the easy thing in that situation is to do Sam. It's like, okay, do that. So basically, I'm trying to prod people. My, my mission is like, okay, prod people to see if there's anyone else in consideration besides Sam. Okay, something I don't know about. And so first person I ended up talking to is Dan. At first, I was just like, oh, this is garbage. Because I had the, like, the, the least like connection with dan so i feel like i'm not going to get anything worthwhile out of here um no. <laughs> wait till not you see the case the festivals. just wait till you see it's like you and dan before the night before any of this you're both just hate each other and it's so hilarious because it's you no one else throws any names out but you and dan in your confessionals like dan's like if if i'm gonna if we have to vote anyone out tomorrow it's definitely william and you are saying if we have to vote someone out i hope it's dan (laughs) it's so funny (laughs) that's amazing yeah it's just like again nothing personal i will say my only personal vendetta was i was annoyed about how openly he was going off one-on-ones with people oh you talk about that a lot yes i know (laughs) and because i was talking about it so much because i feel like no one else was talking about it and that made me upset because i was like people should be upset by this people should be seeing him as suspect if this was me i'd be in the doghouse immediately so why does dan get to get away with this that's not fair so i'm gonna call him the crap out uh (laughs) So that's why that's what I tried to. But anyways, I realized that that's all just preconceived, just like jargon, what's in my head. And I'm trying to keep that at bay. So when I'm talking to him, I just like, I tried to like set it up for him, you know, get the ball. And it's like, okay, who is the people that we think that like we absolutely keep? So we list off the names and it was like all like pretty obvious. Like what's funny here is that like, one of the reasons why I'm thinking of like, maybe it could be Dan is that I don't feel like he's a good challenge asset. And when he listed off the challenge assets, I don't even think he listed himself as one of them. I'm pretty sure. (laughs) (laughs) So I was just like, cool, cool, cool. So we have three people left and one of them's you, obviously not you. Um, So like, are we leaning towards like Trisha or Sam? Um, He didn't even ask that. He, He just offered up Trisha. And that just like, baffled me because i basically (laughs) feel like i set it up as easy as possible to indicate that i was okay with voting with sam which at this point i was i wasn't happy about it i was actually quite mad about it but i was just like there is nothing i as a single player can do to change this vote at this point you know and i was like it is what it is this sucks i literally hate it but this is how the game works sometimes and so when he did that i was like whoa 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 what's going on here and I also I feel like I had it on good authority that Trisha was definitely in the like top three liked people on our tribe I feel like people had zero problems with Trisha and I feel like a lot of people were eyeing Trisha to be someone to work to work with which is honestly one of the reasons why I could never push her higher up on my list of people to work with because I feel like Mm. she was very sought after player Mm. Um, and I don't feel like I had any special in with her that other people probably had so um 
And um, so I was like, wow, okay, yeah, we'll do that. In my head, I'm thinking like, what the frick? So I think the next person I talked to, um, I don't think it was, no, it wasn't Trish. It was Delaney. Delaney. It was Delaney. Delaney, because I know that Dan went to Trish immediately. Yes, so, he did. Yeah. What a dick. <laughs> so I was, I was like, so like, they're they're already like, okay. She's like, okay, so we're doing Sam, right? I'm like, Dan just said Trish. He's like, what? I was like, yeah, I know. I don't know why, but that's. I explained her exactly what happened. I was like, so we listed off the people that we thought were good challenge assets, leaving these three people, and then he just threw out Trish's name, and I'm just like, I don't know why. He's like. She's like, that's super sketchy. I'm like, I know. I don't think anyone's thinking that. What is his game? And so then I was just like, Dan doesn't add anything to challenge. I feel like Samantha is a better asset to challenges and with her knowledge is if Dan is going to play games, freaking vote one, I say, let's just nip this in the bud now and get him out. She's like, okay, let's talk with more people and like figure this out. I'm like, okay, sounds good. So I'm like, okay, well, there's a glimmer of hope here that like maybe we can get Dan now. Um, and so then I talked to Trish and then she then informs me that like, so Dan said, <laughs> you threw my name out. I'm like, yeah, I figured as much, but that's not at all what happened. And so as I'm talking to people, I'm just thinking in my head, how in the hell am I purposely not trying to, to cause chaos? And I immediately fall into the chaos freaking garbage bin mm -hmm. of drama. I'm like, I could I could not avoid this. This just happened to me. It happened to be against someone that I also didn't mind seeing go home. So yeah, I was pushing a vote for Dan. But literally, I didn't utter a single lie that entire round. And people you were didn't. very suspect of me. Yeah. Um, I also didn't lie much in the game at all. Um, and I really like tried to keep that at bay as much as I could. Um, and I had no reason to lie here also. So mm -hmm. I was really just like saying the positives about Sam. Again, using that natural ability to spin the positives of Liza. And by the time I'm finished with that, I don't even have to say much about Dan because they already get the message of me without saying the negatives of Dan. But the positives that Liza brings is so much more significant than whatever Sam. positive Dan has. Sam, not Liza. Sam. <laughs> Samantha. I'm sorry. Why did I say Eliza? I don't know why. Um, they are good friends. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so then I remember it seemed like we had it. We were like 90% set on doing Dan. Yeah. And then I retouched base with Delaney and she's like, Will, I wanted to do it, but like, I don't think Jess and Mike are gonna like switch i think they're gonna yeah. just stay with samantha and i'm just like okay that sucks we mm -hmm. have the numbers we can still vote out samantha and she's like but i don't want to rock the boat so i think we should just stay with this and i'm like um okay i feel like this is a bad move for us and one of the things that i say which i firmly stand by is like sam knows that she's on the chopping block we know that she knows that dan is trying to pull crap we should make him pay for it. Yeah. And then Sam is going to be in debt to us because yeah. we just saved her game. We get nothing by saving Dan. Dan wins in this scenario because he's just been pulling off crap and didn't have any consequences for it. So I'm frustrated that he's getting away with this. And that Sam, who freaking didn't deserve any of this, is now getting like double dirtied because we now have another option and people still aren't willing to do it. One that makes so much more sense. So I am literally so emotionally wrapped up in this at this point i i'm just beside myself and then the last people i talk to or check in with rather is just in mike and they were so cold to me they literally mm. just told me like we're voting um sam there was no discussion there was no room for me to offer other things that was just it and then i was just like wow, that's it. Like they somehow just muscled their way. I, I don't even know how, like this was just kind of their game and it's not a game that typically works. I honestly don't know how, like they had the right people to work against in my theory, because they literally scared people into doing what they wanted to do because of some weird psychological, um, like fear of like getting 
But like, this is a numbers game. They can't do crap if they aren't with us. Mm-hmm. Why are these two people who don't decide the vote deciding the vote? Bull crap. I hated it, this. And so, it wasn't. I think you're really going to like the edit in episode two because everything you're talking about is very clear. Um, I wish <laughs> I had more footage of Jess and Mike because Mike really, my, well, you know, Dan Jess knew that she was Dan's number one. So there was no mm-hmm. way she was getting rid of Dan. Mike mm-hmm. just trusted and believed Dan over you. Um, and then they, you know, Delaney, Jess, Trisha, and Andy had a, a tight four. And so that's how, you know, Jess got her way was that she was like, let's keep this tight four. She wanted Dan to be the fifth. Delaney wasn't sure if she wanted you or Mike to be the fifth. Uh, I think Andy probably wanted you to be the fifth and Trisha, uh, Trisha wanted Mike to be the fifth. So it was a, like they had to, they, they had their reasons. I was upset about it. I kind of wanted Dan to go out. I, yeah. I, I, I literally, as I'm about to explain, I literally was so upset about the fact that yes i'm emotionally wrapped up in this but i know for a fact that i'm not seeing like like i'm my head is not in the clouds here i (laughs) know by the books and by the facts there is no single reason other than like if you have numbers with them to keep dan over sam here there's no reason and so i was like like i I wanted to do something out of spite. I needed to like get this out because it just felt so unjust. And my friend Sam is paying cost of that. And also it's hurting my game because Sam is a connection that I have. So like, this is just literally the worst way to start my game other than Mm -hmm. being voted out myself. And so I'm thinking like, what if I just throw a vote on someone else? And then I'm just like, if I throw a vote on Dan, then it's just going to look bad on me. And then also I'm going to be the only one voting, not in the number. So that's also going to be bad. And I like, don't know what to do and i'm just hoping like maybe like you know sam plays her shot in the dark and that works and that's cool but like i was just like i just can't despite how wrapped up on this i can't just throw my game away because i want to make a statement about what i think is fair and just in this game you know but then it occurred to me i was like wait a minute i can play my shot in the dark (laughs) because I know that like it wouldn't be that sketch because I know that people know that my name has been thrown out there by Dan. So there's at least that. I know I'm not going home. I feel pretty confident about that. But I was just like, but I have the proof to say that it wasn't done for weird reasons. Like, Mm. hey, I have a shot in the dark. If my name is out there, I'm just going to use it. Like, it's just that simple. You know, I would not do that. But that's how convincing it can be just by breaking it down into those simple terms. And so I do that so that way, basically knowing that there's no shot of her staying outside of a shot in the dark, that I could at least do her the favor of rejecting the what they were doing to her and just not voting. Because that's the thing. It's just like, I, I felt so wrong to vote for her. And I literally like felt like I couldn't have the heart to do it. And then I, when I saw that there was an out to literally not vote for her, and also by proxy not vote for every anyone i was like that's what i'm doing no no second thoughts and this game immediately started out emotional and personal because of that which <laughs> <laughs> reminds me of the second thing that i was thinking a lot of yeah so edit point edit point <laughs> yeah so the other thing is this is that Every game, I, the more games that I played, I realized that Survivor is a game of arbitrary rules. Survivor is not a game of chess. It's not a game where you move your player this way, and there's only one way you can move your player this, and there's, there's one way to win this game and all that. No. The rules are arbitrary. We've seen it literally in Survivor itself as it's evolved from old school Survivor to new school Survivor and like the 10 phases it's gone through since then. So it, I realized that like, it's the players in the game itself that defines why we vote out people based on what terms and what we think is the most viable traits in the players in this game. Mm-hmm. So it was my mission to figure out what game of Survivor we were playing as fast as possible so I could abide by those rules. Um, 
And I think pretty quickly I found out that like, okay, there is very little scheming and sketchiness going on, but the little that has gone on has been reprimanded pretty heavily. So I was like, I need to really be as clean as possible here and seeming very trustworthy and someone who doesn't even attempt to do anything like really sketchy or go like put themselves out there. I really felt like I also needed to play a very personal game because I feel like people really value the personal bonds that we were forming in the game. And those two facets work well together for me because they're very core values of myself. And so I was like, okay, this is something that I'm going to do for this game. And I'm just going to hang on to it as long as it makes sense. And that's what I'm going to focus on here. And so ultimately it's not that big of a revolution like oh wow just be super trustworthy and not sketchy Ooh, Mm -hmm. crazy crazy but like no it's it's a very significant because the thing is that i didn't do that in my original game at survival challenge because and i just like did crazy things i didn't know when to stop i i think there was definitely a level of chaoticness that was supported in my original survival challenge game Mm -hmm. and i feel like i just met and then quickly exceeded those limitations (laughs) and i just felt like with this game, there was even less tolerance for that. So I was just like, I got to really watch my step because I already have a natural like thing about me that makes people feel like I'm up to something. So like, I really need to be on my A plus behavior here. And so I was really annoyed about how that first vote went. And even though it wasn't a move that was going to be seen by other players, I feel like it really set the tone for how I wanted to play this game. Someone who really inserted my personal values into this game, my personal connections and making it worth something. Um, And so that was some, that was a move that was for Sam, but also for myself, Mm -hmm. knowing that there was literally no strategic value other than not shooting myself in the foot for doing that. Um, the other players were really thrown off and confused when you did that and they were talking about it with each other afterwards did you ever you know you know blatantly say to them why you played your shot in the dark not until after the game truthfully Uh, but what i but what i did say in the immediate aftermath i think unprompted even was just that like i heard my name was out there yeah i don't think there's any reason to wait there's a huge like super small chance anyways might as well do it now and they seem to like all right good enough for me and i just left it at that there's no reason to push the issue anymore and i feel like i did i played that off the best i could Mm -hmm. um so i mean i didn't have too much to lose if they found out that i had a personal connection to sam she's out of the game so like yeah for that matter um at that point at least so that was that was definitely hard to swallow that whole thing and then just the whole what's so funny is that immediately after this tribal council right um i uh (laughs) i pulled dan aside immediately you're gonna love this too this is episode three you're gonna love this good good (laughs) i i knew that this was good tv in the moment i knew it was um i do some fourth wall breaking um and i literally said to dan because immediately i was just like I this is like how I want to play the game and my type of game is being attacked right now. I need to defend my game play, you know, as someone who is isn't doing shenanigans. And so basically I did something that was like very out of character for me personally <laughs> um which is just literally call someone out and to their face not holding back. This is something that I basically never do in real life. Um, but I felt like I needed to put Dan in his place and know that I was not about to tolerate any more of this. Um, I didn't know strategically what I had to gain from this, other than the fact that there was this one game that I played where I had a missed opportunity. There was this person who just for some reason was against me throughout the game, and he failed to get me out twice. And then after this cat and mouse game of like pretending to work together, but not actually working together, I had a confrontation with him, put him on blast. It was like really intense, just same as intensity as I did with Dan. 
And there was this moment where I literally could have utilized this as a humbling moment for him and me going off on him to then put this all aside and work together, knowing that I had gotten to my most real point because I had put so much emotional effort into saying all of this stuff. But I didn't do that in that scenario. And I remember reading the viewers lounge and stuff about what a missed opportunity that was and how that would have been the mastermind move to go off on this person, put them in their place, be <laughs> like a huge asshole, and then turn it around and being like, okay, let's, let's work together for real now. This is, this is where this actually starts. And that's what I intended to do with Dan. I didn't know if it would work. I didn't know if he would think of me differently, but I was just like, if there is any hope for me working with Dan, this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to come at them. I'm going to be super intense. I'm going to put it all out there. And then I'm going to say, let's bygones be bygones. Let's start again. And honestly, I think that it definitely didn't make a huge impact, but it definitely put things in the right trajectory. I think that it definitely got Dan off my back in the short term. It definitely helped doors open up way later in the game to actually work with each other. There was yeah. a very weird turnaround for me and Dan towards the end where I think yeah. that we were starting to trust each other quite a bit. And that would not have happened if I didn't clear the air. And I did it immediately. And I did it in a way that could not be confused as anything but the truth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I called him out. I said to him, I was just like, look, I know you're lying to people and I don't appreciate <laughs> it. I haven't done anything like wrong here. And you're trying to throw me under the bus. You're telling me you're not lying, but I know you're lying to me. You, you can were like, keep play saying, back the tapes. <laughs> you play, yeah, I literally like pointed to whoever was filming. It's like, they have the proof. I know they have the proof. You're not about to gaslight me into thinking that something else happened. Um, and so that's that. And um, I feel like that also was a good thing for other people to witness. They didn't have to hear the words that was going on, <clears throat> but I felt like it was a good thing for the other players. They said like, wow, Will did not like the fact of what happened from last round, that doesn't seem like something that he would do if he was being like sketchy, you know, yeah. um, because I would just be off talking with other people trying to again, throw Dan under the bus. Instead, the first thing I do is talk to Dan. Mm -hmm. And then Dan can then come back. And then they ask Dan, Hey Dan, what happened? It's like, well, he wasn't happy with me but he said that he wanted to work with me by the end of it. And I feel like that probably surprised some people. And if anything, hopefully changed some minds in the direction that I needed them to have changed. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Okay. So the next big thing that happens is the swap. Um, and you choose the, the wood cookie that gives you the power to be a team captain. So want to talk about that? Yeah, so, and we really only lost one person before the swap? Yeah, isn't that wild? Wow, that's <laughs> wild. So, who would have knows if we went to Tribal Council again? I really have no clue. Um, so, because this game was so much by the round and by the most recent events that it really, like, you can say that this person was on the bottom of the tone to pull if they were to lose here. This is the person to go. I don't think so because there was always so much conversation right before trial that often changed who went uh, more so in the later game for sure. But still, yeah. um, I think it would have been crazy. Regardless, I, again, am just like, I can't believe that like I have made it my mission to not be seen so much in this game. And this game refuses to not... <laughs> allow me to be <laughs> under the radar yeah like wow i'm so glad that i now have to pick a whole freaking team and oust who i think as like most viable mm -hmm. and immediately in my head i'm thinking holy crap please let me not be the very first pick please so don't let me there. draft number one yeah. i did get lucky i feel like this definitely would have hurt me because i had made big promises to both andy and delaney and what I promised anyone, I always followed up with because I never promised anyone final two until later in the game because mm -hmm. I wanted to make realistic promises that I knew I could keep up with. And I told them, it's like, hey, till merge, we're together and let's talk again in the merge to see where we can go from there. So yeah. it wasn't even like, we're going to stop working together at the merge. Just like, hey, all I know is that I have no reason to vote you off pre-merge. So I hope you know that you have no reason to distrust me, you know? So keeping it very... Um, 
easy to digest. I feel like if you tell someone right off the bat, you know, hey, we're going to the end together, it's like, okay, cool. I don't know that much about you. How much is that true? Stuff like that. I feel like it's much more respectable to be like, hey, here's something that is easy to digest and see how you can follow up with. I trust you. You know, I feel like that definitely helped me. I don't know how many people even believe me with that, but I feel like it definitely was more believable than just making a bunch of final twos with people, <laughs> which <laughs> uh, has failed before for me. So, um, <laughs> So yeah, so I um, basically hadn't made a distinction of who I wanted to make, who I wanted to work with more being Andy or Delaney. And I was mm-hmm. trying to keep it that way because basically I was happy to work with either of them super close, but I think I, w- I was allowing room for situations to develop. I didn't want to pigeonhole with someone who then just didn't see me the same way as I saw them or got swapped out you know in a situation where i couldn't even work with them and i'm thinking the whole game damn i can't even work with my number one so i'm trying to keep it open and flexible so the last thing i want is to be forced to make this decision now during a swap i'm like this is the worst way to make that distinction and fortunately i don't pick first and fortunately fortunately mike picks andy so like bam delaney easy don't even have to think about it Mm -hmm. so that made me so happy um and then i think mike picked just next yeah which is no surprise um and then i pick trish next because i was like okay in my head trish has been like number four number five around that end yeah seems like a safe candidate i know trish gets along with delaney vice versa bam and also i think i remember early on delaney speaking highly of trish early on in the game specifically so i was like yeah i need trish in here for both their sakes because i wanted to make sure that the people i was working with felt like they had legs in the game yeah i know it's some people's strategy to like make it so they're the only option and they have to work with them but i was just like i feel like the way i garner trust in people is by trusting them with power in the game and then trusting that they won't screw me over so I think like, that's great. And, and that's what you did with everybody in that, in that whole swap scenario. Yeah. Because after that, I knew immediately because I had to pick someone from the other tribe. I was just like, based off of the vibes that I've gotten, me and Matt had some fun interactions playing like the tr- games against each other. Yeah. I also saw a great moment from him when we were playing that really nasty game of handball or whatever. Yeah. And he was <laughs> with me in the back trying not to make any confrontations stuff like that we were in the same mindset i respected that and he just seemed like one of those types of guys that i could actually vibe with so i was Mm -hmm. like okay i need to take advantage of this opportunity so i pick matt and i immediately tell him like i mean and it is true it's like there was no question you were the person i wanted to work with most on that tribe out of everyone which was and this is so weird about survivor you never know what words doom your game and you never know what words make your game and this was one of the words that benefited my game most because from that moment on matt had a newfound appreciation for me because yeah. i flat out told them that i wanted to work with him and for some dumb reason no one had told him that before and so oh, a lot of people I was, told him that before okay well <laughs> that's what he pitched that. to me and yeah. so he was sly that, yeah definitely so but that being said, he told that to me because he also felt a gratitude towards that. So no, listen, alternative motives, but before, before the day before the swap, was it the day before? Anyway, it was before uh, he had a confessional where he's talking about you. He's like the guy with the blue hair. He, he was really scary at first, but then he kicked me in the stomach and now I want to be his friend. And he like cracks up laughing. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. Yeah. How did I, Oh, I definitely remember accidentally hurting yeah. it. It was I an accident. I... Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I felt really bad about it. That's all I remember is that I felt bad about something I did to Matt. That's what stuck in my head. <laughs> um, so um, anyways, that felt like, wow, I made a good move there. That's good. Mm-hmm. Even though there's there's things against that, whatever. Point still stands about like weird things that you say does make an impact for the better and the worse and not yeah. the ways that you would expect. Um, and so then, um, the next, and going along with what I just said is that I told Matt, who do you feel safest with 
I know you're coming from the other tribe. I know you're coming out from numbers. I want you to feel like you're safe with us. Who do you trust most? I and think then, like, you saying that of, is even more impactful. There you go. That yeah. like, proved to him. Yeah. That, oh, this guy wants to work with me. Okay. Wow. Yeah. And so, and he's like, Mary Ellen. And in my head, I'm thinking perfect because if I didn't have anyone else pick for me, that is probably the person who I went with with. Really? who I would have went with just because I feel like Mary Ellen is the person who I needed in my game mm. because of the game I was trying to play. Mm. She's the kind of person who cares about that. There's a lot of gamers here. They don't give a crap about me trying yeah. to personally feel vindicated <laughs> about how I'm playing. Mary Ellen is someone who does, you know? Um, and so it's like, that is a great person to work with. And I was really hoping that he would say that. So it worked out perfectly. And then it comes down to the last one. And then I have to pick between, is it Justin and Stephanie? Yeah. Yeah. I'm so curious about why everyone is curious about why you chose Justin. So in my head, I'm thinking I've got Delaney and I've got Trish. I have those people that I know I can trust. I have really good vibes with Matt and Mary Ellen. And so I'm thinking I need either another ace up my sleeve or I need someone who is an easy boot for our first who if we were to go tribal council Mm -hmm. and in both ways the answer was Justin Mm -hmm. he was going to be either one of those people for me you know so I asked Matt again I was like how do you feel about Justin because I didn't want to make the call solely based on me because I didn't trust that people wouldn't say that me and Justin knew each other, which I was right to assume so. And so I didn't want to just openly pick Justin without any second thought, you know? So I deliberated with Matt. And basically the point of that was just to egg him on to tell me there's reason to take Justin so I can take Justin, not just because I want to. Okay. So that's why I asked. He was like going to be the target for you. Justin. He was either going to be the target for me or he knew he was going to be in a bad spot and needed to work with me. Yeah. And then there I would have a, a new angle on this game. So either way, it was going to be a win for me because I knew looking at this group when I was trying to figure out based off of the promises I made about not targeting people till merge, you know, and knowing who am I supposed to go to the end of this game with now that a swap is happening and that picture is coming clear. Mm. And I'm looking at Trish I'm looking at Delaney, I'm looking at Matt, and I'm looking at Mary Ellen. I'm like, damn, here's my final five. This is what (laughs) I want. This is a group that can really work together and I can go far with and feel really good about that because it goes well with the game that I've crafted so far. And I feel like these people are people that are also equally down to work with me. I feel like this is the best thing for my game out of any people that I can have in this game. This is what's best for my game right now. And I was ready to make further commitments with that group but I didn't want to do it with the entire tribe because the chances were low that we wouldn't go to tribal. So I was like, I need to have an easy boot. So that could be the next person I pick. Also it's like, if that isn't what ends up happening, it could also easily be because I have a personal connection to Justin and Justin chooses to use. The reason why I'm saying Justin chooses to do this and not me is because, um, me and Justin have had a lot of interaction since then. And I know how he feels about me personally um, in the game and outside the game. He has hosted games that we have played together. And I feel like the I'm willing to entertain him more than he's willing to entertain me. Mm-hmm. So I just like immediately knew is like, if we work together, it's not because I want to work with Justin. It's going to be because Justin wants to work with me. Mm. And I need to see that in a situation that I feel confident in. And I didn't know what that was. I honestly didn't know what that situation looked like. And so we have that group together. I feel I really liked this swap tribe. I thought it was stellar. I really well, liked it yes. so much. Um and I immediately felt like this was a very positive thing for my game. I felt like I had lots of options in my original tribe, but I feel like there was a lot of questions that I really didn't have answers to. Um, but when I got to this tribe, I felt a whiff of the end game. 
Mm-hmm. Like, ooh, ooh, there's there's a little trail here. I, like, I'm smelling the scent that leads me to the end of the game, and that starts now, you know? Um, and with that, there's also an extra level of intensity. And so I need to, you know, be even more careful about my moves, and I need to be more careful about who I'm working with and who I'm choosing to vote out with. And so we go into this challenge, uh, which is the reward challenge, you know, um, and just this interesting aspect of it still being kind of for individual and not for the whole tribe. And what's so interesting is that me and Justin did a very similar challenge for uh, reward in our season of survival challenge. And we were the best in our tribe. Our tribe didn't oh, win, really? but we were the last two, we were the last two holdouts. So I was oh. like, me and Justin, we're going to seek vengeance and we're going to like <laughs> take two of this. And what sucks is that, so I'm sharing discs with Justin and Matt and for some reason, and I'm, it was, yeah, it was my right hand. I'm like, literally like, um, cause this is audio. <laughs> like I'm literally like framing up my hands right now. Like I'm back in the game, like trying to remember what was what. <laughs> So I gave the edge to Justin thinking that my right hand would be stronger. And like, for some reason, something was not clicking. Like for those who haven't done endurance challenge, it's a bit, I know it's obvious. It's a mental game, not a physical game. But the biggest things about winning an endurance challenge is finding a groove. You need to Mm -hmm. quickly find a groove where you can zone out and lock in and just stay there and not think about the pain, not think about what you're doing just zone out in a in a good comfortable way and somehow i immediately found that in my off left hand with matt and in in my right hand my dominant hand someone was just clicking it felt immediately uncomfortable even though we just started no position felt right and i don't know what happened it just like it just immediately started like cramping i'm like what the heck is going Mm -hmm. on and so i think we only lasted like five ten minutes i just really not even that yeah it yeah. was really quick and I felt very disappointed. Um, and so then like, all right, well, so much for that narrative of me and Justin <laughs> coming back to like take this. And so I don't really think I'm crap. Like I, I really need to to at least build a respectable thing with Matt here because me dropping on that quickly is, is pretty bad. Um, I had also up to this point, I could not believe how well I was doing at challenges. I really <laughs> am nothing special at challenges, but I feel like I had several really good moments the challenges i felt like i was seen as a really good challenge competitor you were, and i yeah. was personally proud of what i did and i was not expecting to have that redemption from the <laughs> challenge things um one of my favorite things was building that fire at the end there because that is one of my strengths is building fires and i feel like i aced that and that was great um one thing that i wish i did better at was that first challenge where i was at the end with samantha that i talked about earlier when we're throwing the the cornhole like thing yeah justin was on the other side and i wanted to beat justin so bad not (laughs) because or hmm, not just because it's justin but justin is a professional cornhole player yeah and so (laughs) i was like if i could hold this over justin's head that i beat him at his own game in surviving main i mm, it would be so juicy. It'd be so great. It you know, because I, 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 I've been on the butt end of a lot of the jokes of interactions that we've had <laughs> with each other, but that's my own doing. So I don't have a problem with that. I was like, watch me create this scenario where he will just forever be embarrassed by. And it didn't happen, but I was just overjoyed by the opportunity to even make that happen. You um, know, uh, Justin had a really funny confessional that I ended up having to cut. So it's not in the episode, no. but, but you need to know about it. He, he, okay. right after that challenge, he's saying like, the only way I won was because I kept thinking to myself, I cannot let William Herman not beat me at <laughs> Cornhole. <laughs> I totally believe that. I am, I kind of felt the, like, the conviction that he had that, like, I, this is no longer about this game. I need yeah. to beat William. Like, it was you. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> you're welcome, Justin. That was that motivation. That was really hard, by the way. That was not easy. Um, yeah. <laughs> so going back to where we're talking about, um, me and Matt, through this challenge, this is such a key point for us. We find this chemistry that I didn't know that we had, but I knew that could exist. I just didn't expect it to come out in this way. And just the focus that we shared, the communication that we're talking. And I feel like this is because 
I, I don't feel like I realized it in the game, but I feel like looking back, I realize it now is because we both have ADHD and I feel oh. like the ways we both focus are very similar. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like we were able to provide the right amount of distraction to concentration. It's a very weird mix when it comes to ADHD, but I feel like we were able to give each other what we needed. We were communicating perfectly. Mm-hmm. It was beautiful to watch. I was, <laughs> it's so funny because you have me and Matt talking to each other the entire time, supporting each other, giving each other tips of what we need and all this kind of stuff. You have Delaney and Mary Ellen just being a rock, just like, yeah, no, no yeah, it's just like, <laughs> pure skill like it, i just <laughs> loved it and it's so interesting that we just went like the other try went out at like 20 minutes in and then we were yeah. like you know what so i found that zone early on but then there was a second layer to that zone i'd say about half hour in that i knew that i was in it for the long haul mm. and i really couldn't understand how i could ever accomplish going that far in how many that cats do you have I'm so sorry, but I just no, love cats. <laughs> I have two. That's the this second one I've Henry. seen. Henry. Henry. The other one is Jemmy. Oh, Jimmy or Jenny? Yeah. Neither. Uh, Jemmy, like G E M M Y. Gotcha. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. I. I just felt like I unlocked a new. I think this is. There has been a few times where I feel like I've reached new parts of myself that I didn't know I had in challenges, but that was one that truly surprised me more than anything I've ever done because endurance is not a strong point of mine. Mm -hmm. I used to play soccer and I could not do midfield because midfield is basically running around all the time. Mm -hmm. I I was a sprint runner, you know? When Mm -hmm. I played baseball, I was the master at stealing bases. I (laughs) could give 110% from one base to the next like no other player on our team but tell me to run back and forth on a field for an hour, <laughs> I will die. <laughs> I cannot do that. So um, I'm definitely a short burst person. So anything endurance wise, I'm just not the best at. And for me to go like, what was it, an hour 10? Yeah. Minutes into that. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I literally didn't think that was possible. And I, you could have gone I, longer. I, you could have made I it. I could have gone longer. Hours, probably. <laughs> yeah. Um, I could, I could, I, I was just so like proud of my performance there. And that's not something I say lightly um, because I really felt like there's not a single expectation I had that could have been close to where I actually ended up. And I was just literally so shocked. Um, So I'm super happy about that. And that's one of my favorite things from this game is that challenge. But through that was something even more important from that game, which is the bond that me and Matt created Mm -hmm. through that challenge. And then immediately following at the spaghetti dinner. Um, What was crazy is that, so whatever episode this all lands on. Five. five, I'm doing it right now. (laughs) Five. Five. I'm getting a lot of, uh, my like visual like sometimes when you play orbs they have um a, what you call it oh, there's like um there's like a like a rating thing mm-hmm. and one of those things is visibility mm-hmm. like this is a a five visibility for william in this episode um because there's this challenge going on oh and right before i'm picking teams so i'm picking teams yes. i'm doing this reward challenge i'm one of the four main people in this challenge and then i go on this reward and then you have a whole debacle with stephanie and her rice confessionals so this is a <laughs> like a high visibility william episode i can't wait to oh watch shit it. It, it, um, so, but the picking was on episode four but there's still a lot of visibility for you here yeah because yeah, that's yeah. a because then they went to tribal <laughs> and then it was the Either way, I just felt like, again, these are things, I know I technically put myself in this position (laughs) by literally competing and going this far, but I just feel like these situations were just, I wasn't creating these situations where I was being focal points. They were just being thrust upon me and I was just in them. And I was like, damn, this isn't really great for my game, but I'm still eating it up. Like, I love it, you know? Um, So we go on this reward and it was such a great time. And then this was so perfect because it was, really four people that I like I said I wanted to go to the end with and so this was the time to really lock that in yeah and I felt so good about it um and 
I it just felt like everything was right within my game. I felt just really at peace with how my game was shaping up. I had no inclination that I felt like this is where I win the game. I'm winning this damn game. No, none of that. It was just like, I feel like I'm a lock in for the merge at this point, And I feel like I've got a compelling case to win this game. I don't know if I'm going to win yet. There's a lot of layers before we get there, but I feel like if I am going to win this game, this is the kind of setup that you see for someone who does win the game. So that mm-hmm. had me incredibly encouraged. However, there was a small roadblock before this point, which we have to talk about. One of the craziest things, which was when we agreed for oh, <laughs> us to drop out for this reward, we just thought it'd be given as us four on the reward that we yep. could like split the road. My guess is, and you can confirm or deny or whatever, my guess is that it was always designed to be a two people win and then they pick two more people. Yes. But because of what's transpired, let's make it spicy. Yes. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was not an automatic thing. We still had to go through the formality of Delaney and Mary Ellen picking us. And so when... And I thought about this because when we were setting up and we were lining up, I immediately thought of, oh, this doesn't feel like an automatic thing. You know, we just made a visible deal, but now I'm getting like flashbacks to freaking um, Yao Min in the car situation. I'm just like, (laughs) promises don't mean anything in Survivor. What am I doing? Why did I drop out of that challenge? I'm thinking it's like, I just gave up. And And I'm just like, why did I trust that this was just going to be what it is? And then I was just thinking, it's just like, okay, I have been eating well at this game. All this is, is an eating reward, which is nice, but I have been well-fed in this game with the rice, Mm -hmm. but more so than that, um, with like the rewards that we had been getting, we won all the food based rewards, except for the coffee, which I think was still to our advantage. Um, (laughs) So um, we, uh, so I, I felt, and I know Matt had been puking. He hasn't had really any food. I was like, I need Matt in the long haul for this game. And Matt needs to be healthy. Matt needs the food way more than me. Please let there be some way for Matt to be on this reward. So when Liza said, you guys get to pick one person, you can see it. There was not a single hesitation. No, I was me him. pushing, <laughs> yeah. pushing Matt. Like, <laughs> pick Matt. I did this for Matt and half of my like I'm the kind of person who won't do much for themselves but will go to the ends of the earth for a friend and the main motivation for that challenge was getting Matt food mm-hmm. that is why I stuck it out there was not for myself but for Matt and so um immediately doing that because it's like if if Matt doesn't get the food my whole point of sticking in there to this challenge is moot like Matt needs this. And so I immediately got him. And I was like, at that point, weirdly content and at peace with not having this reward. I was like, Matt gets the food. That's all that matters. And then Liza is like, and then you could pick one more. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that this was just for the drama and for the bit. And like, I was basically ready to run up, <laughs> except that there was quite the hesitation it was so, so long it was so that long they had to confer <laughs> and my stomach went so low because i was just like did i did i mess up here like did i <laughs> seriously undervalue what i thought of like my closeness to these people and i'm just dumbfounded like what is going on and i see matt visibly upset by this I don't know how much of it is actual true upsetness or him trying to play his part, but like he definitely was at least playing that he was very upset by this not being a, I would like to think that there was a personal side of him that was very upset by it because he knows that I did this for him and he would want me to come there with him. So um, after like a minute or two of like, no joke, it was literally so long, so awkward. Um, they picked me and I was like, thank goodness. And yeah. it wasn't until long after that it was like, well, technically before the challenge started, right. Trish chose to sit out of this challenge because of the numbers. And we made this, 
yeah. promise about. But the thing is, is that one of the reasons that Trish sat out is that she couldn't eat half the reward. <clears throat> Yeah. So it made sense for her to sell because she literally couldn't really have the reward. So I'm very confused about, yeah, technically we made this <laughs> promise, but you made a more important promise, which is the <laughs> fact that you got the reward in the first place is because we let you have it. So wait, wait till you hear this. Ma- <laughs> this is in the episode. Mary Ellen, because throw- I think she's the one who was like, well, wait, because we promised Trisha. And then Delaney's like, oh, yeah, that's true. And then they it drags on and on and on. And then Mary Ellen's like, maybe we should choose Justin instead. <laughs> she fucking throws out Justin. <laughs> if Justin like, was out of it, we lost it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Delaney yeah. really uh, put her foot down on no on Justin. <laughs> but I just think that's well, hilarious. That. <laughs> that's so funny. My word. Yeah. So it's such an unintentional great moment this season um (laughs) it really was um so we had the reward the reward was literally so amazing um i did not expect so much food i i thought it was literally going to be for two people but this Mm. was made for like six people i was like i we couldn't eat all the food there was so much of it i had like three heaping plates of spaghetti and then some garlic bread and i was just like that's that's all i can do i don't want to be sick you know um so that's math bit. I, I, I ain't doing that. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so we go to camp that night and the, the, that night was really great. Um, but there was some, definitely some important things that happened. I feel like mm-hmm. um, the bond between me and Matt just continued to blossom mm-hmm. as like, we were talking about some personal bits and just like the longer the game I had played with Matt, the more I felt like personally connected to him. It's like, damn, like, I really need to work with Matt because I just feel so much like connection to him. And I like, cause I'm pretty sure that's also when I figured out like the ADHD thing. You guys talked that, about like, that? that. I'm pretty sure yeah. I can, I'm not a hundred percent certain, but I feel confident in saying that. Um, cause I remember us talking about a lot of personal things mm-hmm. by the fire that night. And then that night, um, uh, another uh geez, I think I was talking with I feel like I had talks with Delaney and possibly also Trisha about who we would vote out yeah. if we went to tribal council. And I'm pretty sure we were talking about Justin and feeling pretty good about that because mm-hmm. basically we were happy. We were so happy to have Justin as a part of our tribe, if for no other reason, but freaking challenges. Yeah. But he was going to be a huge threat in merge. In fact, I think at that point in the game, he had visibly, geez, Henry, careful. <laughs> um, he had visibly became the biggest target in the game. Yes. Um, do I think that he was the number one threat in the game? No, like literally in the game, I did not think he was the biggest threat, but Correct. there was no denying he was visibly the biggest yeah. threat in the game. And that's, what's so important about this game is that like, I can, I feel like when I get pinned as one of the biggest threats or the biggest threat in a game, it's never actually true. <laughs> so I feel for Justin because I feel like that's why I normally end up. And I will say, like, no offense to Justin, but, like, he completely did this on his part. And I don't know if it's him prioritizing challenge performance or whatnot, but he had no hesitation to take leads and challenges. Challenge after challenge. And really speaking up, too. And I was constantly, I'm like, Justin, you know better than this. What are you doing? (laughs) It's weird. It's weird. Yeah. uh, So I was like, man, like, better better than Justin, not me. You know, so what was that? So there was that, but there was this time. It was so great because we, we did this weird thing in our camp where we built two fires in our camp because we had this nice big open fire pit with seeds and stuff like that. But it was so cold. It was literally so cold that night for no reason that we needed, we needed heat. We needed fire. And we had some people sleeping by the big campfire, but there's not enough room there. And there also wasn't enough room in the shelter for all the people that we had. So we built a mini fire by the shelter so that way they could provide warmth for that area. Um, And so me and Justin are working on this fire and everyone else is by the big campfire. And we just have like 
at like a low tone, but on a whisper tone, because you don't want to whisper in whispering distance, mm-hmm. not to understand, but to hear people whispering. Like that's not a good thing. Yeah. So we were just having a conversation that we were projecting as one that we weren't um, worried about people hearing, but one that was totally meant to be and was actively secret. We were, it was so cool because this was one of the best moments between us because we were immediately knowing exactly where our heads were at about what we do about our relationship in this game because we knew this would happen. And now we have both started at different points in the game. We both have different people. Is there a chance that we work together? What does that look like? What are we supposed to do with this like relationship? And I had talked in confessionals beforehand about my concerns about Justin and my close ties to him because yes, I know Jess and I know Mike and I even know Samantha, you know, at the beginning of the game. But like, Justin is the person that we have actual history mm-hmm. with to a significant point that really matters in games that's unavoidable, um, like literally unavoidable. I had no interest in bringing up a bunch of my past into this game, but it was literally impossible with Justin being there because it, it's so directly linked to what happened in that game. And so we're talking in we're not only talking about exactly what we've been thinking about, we're exactly on the same page about what we need to talk about, what we need to do. We're interacting exactly in the way that we wanted each other to interact as far as like voice levels and stuff like that. It was just so instantaneous. And then we're also leaving out key words. You know, we're just trying to say like, hey, like, uh, like instead of saying, man, I can't believe we're playing together again, you know, like from survival challenge and it was like leaving keywords like that. It's like, man, I can't believe we're here yet. You know, because mm. we both know what we're talking about, but I'm purposely leaving out main words that if they were just to overhear a word or two, that would be kind of suspect. Right. So yeah. we're purposely keeping it general. And I just thought it was a really cool moment of showing our strengths as a pair, you know, of just our conversational and actually knowing each other as people, you know. Um, but Justin laid it out for me and he's like, you know, I know I'm a big threat right now. I know that my chances of making it to the end of the game are kind of slim. And if I am going to get to the end of the game, I need to be used as a meat shield. And I really feel like you will have a lot to gain by using me as a meat shield. Mm -hmm. And these were all things that I was aware of, but wasn't heavily considering until we had this conversation. Mm -hmm. Because it was weird. He didn't bring anything new to the table. The only thing that he brought to the table was just a clear line of communication of where his game is at and what he wants from me and where he feels like he is. And I knew him well enough to know that he was 100% sincere. And that's important. And so when I talked earlier about me and Justin, me and Justin working together was going to be more about Justin than about me, mm-hmm. this is what I was referring to. And I had that moment where I felt like, okay, you know, Justin wants to work with me. Right. And at this point, I'm now thinking – crap it would be really nice to have justin in the merge because (laughs) why vote him out here on the swap when i really need people in the merge because after this conversation i didn't make any promises to him in the game he did make one promise to me though he promised me that he would not write my name down in this game he said he felt bad about our like history and he wanted to make amends by not writing my name down in this game I had mixed feelings about that because I liked the jester and I feel like there was sincerity in it. But if I had any questions about anything he had to say, it was that because I feel like that's a really hard promise to make towards the end of the game. Mm -hmm. I feel like I got the sincerity that he will not write my name down till merge, but through the rest of the game, Mm -hmm. he knows and he has personally like vindicated me for oh my gosh, just saying too much, making too many promises. So here's Justin making a crazy big promise to me. And I'm just like, now I'm in his shoes. Now I'm just like, (laughs) should I trust him? And so I didn't make any promises to him. I think all I said is that I really appreciate that jester and I will do my best to keep you in this game, but I can't promise you anything. And I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure that's basically what I told him. I was trying to give it very straight to him. None of and this yeah. was on camera, right? No, this was yeah. a totally, and it is kind of a shame, but it is also part of what made the moment so pure because we <laughs> were, what was nice is that we were just talking 
as we were as friends. Like it literally was just a normal conversation that happened to be in a game. And what made it special is the fact that, you know, my last game was with him at, like next to a campfire, you know, <laughs> on the same tribe. And here we are again. Mm-hmm. And it was a really special for me moment. I know Justin has had several moments since then and several more significant moments, but I don't have that history that he does yet. Yeah. And so for me, this was a personally a big moment for me and is something that felt like it was really transcending games. Mm. Um, so that night, and this is, I don't know if it qualifies as a biggest regret because I knew that I had been so careful about my presentation with other players about my strategic thought process about what I'm giving off as far as, am I looking like someone who is thinking about strategy right now? I was being very careful about things like that and trying to say less words. Again, man of fewer words this time, keeping, save it for the confessionals, save it for the cameras, you know? Yeah. Um, pretty sure I literally told myself that at some time, save it for the cameras. Well, like, <laughs> so um, it was very hard to really think through things with myself, with all of this set down. So that night, I'm thinking, while we're sleeping, this is the time for me to like whiteboard this out in my head about, I really like, I told myself, okay, I'm going to like pretend to sleep. I'm going to think about every single person in this game. What is their route to win? And what do they need to do it? And where do I fit in the puzzle? And how can I get there? Because ultimately... Any person that is willing to take me to the end needs to feel that they are actually winning the game. Yeah. There is no angle where I get brought to the end because of just <clears throat> pure gestures. Even though that's what I'm building my game off of, I know that in reality that that's not what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Because I have played games where I've played very clean and nice games And that only gets you to six and fifth loyalty, even in the most nice spirited games out here Mm -hmm. only gets you so far because then it gets to the point of you are going to win if you go to the end and you need to be taken care of. And so it just doesn't win you games. So it's like, okay, I know that will get me a good part of the way through the merge, but what, what allows me to win? And so I'm trying to think of, Every round needs to go a certain way for me to get to the end. And that involves meat shields. And Justin's brought this great proposal about being a meat shield and stuff like that. If I get rid of Justin, who's the next big target? And I didn't think there was a clear next big target. But what I did know is that there was a clear pool of three people who would be seen as that next big target. And that pool was myself, Andy, Mike, and Nandy. Yeah. And so I was just like, Getting rid of Justin immediately puts me potentially where Justin was. I didn't know for a fact, but I was just like, I know I'm within that threshold. Mm -hmm. With Justin here, I feel like I'm in a much better spot. I feel like I have very little heat as far as being one of the biggest threats in the game. With Justin gone, now I'm in the running. And that's not the place I want to be at the beginning of the merge. That can't be where I am at the beginning of the merge. That's the worst place to be in. So... I'm trying to run through every single scenario and I'm trying to mastermind exactly what I need to do the next day because it was going to make or break my game. And then because I basically saw this game for me is going to be won in the beginning of the merge. It's not going to be won in final six or final five. It can only be lost then. I feel like if I don't give myself the cards that I need to win at the beginning of the merge, setting myself up into the final six or five, I'm just not going to win because I feel like there is so many avenues where I could get myself to the final six or five, but very few of those where I end up there and win. And so it's like, okay, what people do I need to bring with me to that six and five that allows me to win? Because I feel like that is a far fewer scenarios than the other one. And, and who's, so, in that, who's in that five or, five or six? But that's what I'm trying to figure out. <laughs> I'm trying to map this all out in my head. And I'm like, what is that answer? You know, I know what I need to accomplish, but what is this answer? And I was just so tired. I literally kept zoning in and out. And I was so angry because I felt like 
in this weird headspace, my game was slipping away because mm. I knew this is my only chance that I had to map this out. And if I didn't map this out, then I wouldn't know what to do tomorrow. And if I didn't know what to do tomorrow, I might as well just go home now because yeah. this game isn't going <laughs> to just randomly shape out with William winning. Yeah. William only wins because he did exactly what he needed to set up for him to win. So I just know that obviously the odds are against you always. But I felt like even though I did a good job of setting up my game, the odds are still very much against me winning this game. So I was annoyed that I felt like I couldn't capitalize on that night of mentally preparing a strategy and stuff like that. And I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't have the, I was so baffled because I have spent years prepping for this game, years thinking about what I would do. Here I am at this moment where I can set myself up to win and I mentally cannot keep myself focused enough to think about what I need to do because I am, and this is, this is the elements that we're talking about. This yeah. is the tiredness, the cold. It's literally like making me like, and I can't imagine what people go through on day 39 is they're trying to think of their final tribal council speech yeah, and dude. trying to have some <laughs> sort of clear line of focus. Cause I'm struggling freaking mm. was it day two? Yeah. Day two. Day two and I'm losing it. Like I feel like mm -hmm. I'm a madman. So <clears throat> And you just say like, fucking oh spaghetti. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> like I'm like minus the tiredness and the coldness. Otherwise, I'm doing pretty good. Um so that was very disappointing. That night was also rough. It was so cold. And I remember at one point I had to get up at like it was probably like four or five a.m. because literally, like you could just see a glimmer of light in the sky. It was just starting; the stars were just starting to go away, and the sky was going from black to like gray. And the fire in our little like thing had gone down, and we had used all of the wood that we had collected. And mm. this campsite was not good for wood collecting. My first mm -hmm. campsite was amazing for wood collecting, so I was literally like visibly shivering. And I'm someone who only shivers when they're like dangerously cold so i was like this needs to be addressed now so i remember like a zombie just walking in the middle of the night getting more firewood to like this and i also remember delaney because delaney was ended up being the only person who ended up sleeping inside uh the camp with me and i remember her being like just really thankful that like i was keeping that fire going because like she was also just freezing her ass off and she's someone who does this kind of stuff for fun and she's yeah. not having a good time she's like damn this is no joke <laughs> Um, I'm also someone who likes sleeping in the cold. So also if I'm mm -hmm. having a bad time sleeping in the cold and you know, wow. it's bad. So, um, getting that fire back up immediately was like making things better and allowed us to sleep those last hours. But then I woke up that morning and I'm feeling just not as sharp as the day before. Cause my mm -hmm. sleep was so interrupted about tending that fire mm -hmm. that I'm like, damn, this is going to be hard. Um, and I knew that. I was in a good spot in this game. I'm like, okay, yeah, things could be better, but things could always be together. Honestly, I've done it. I know what like a good start to a game looks like at this point after all the games that I've played. And I feel like this is a pretty decent one. So I was like, okay, feeling good about merge, but like, I know make it or break it time for William is coming. And I need to, I need, I, I need to do stuff that I can't just sit back and watch things happen. I need to do stuff. And I need to know when those things when those opportunities come to take advantage of them. So I'm stressing out about these situations that haven't come yet and don't know what they look like. I just know that I need to take action when they come. What is that action? I don't know. What are those opportunities? I don't know. I just know that I feel a gap closing and that if I don't do something soon, then I'm going to be shut out. Um, and this is very much foreshadowing for the, <laughs> for the later part of the game. Um, when we get to our next tribal council, um, we're in this really tough spot of, <laughs> we were all agreeing to vote Justin, but Justin has done a great job of con giving his points about why he would make a great meat and a great person to take to the verge. The problem that I'm having is that I just like the four of me, Matt, Mary Ellen, Delaney, and Trish, of oh, the five rather, too much. And I just feel like I trust those five more to help me win than Justin. Um, yeah. I feel like Justin can be, he would, no matter what promises he made, when it's final five, who cares? At that point, all bets are off. 
So, and also I feel Justin's a hard person to beat. I feel like, yeah, Delaney's a great challenge competitor, but out of that five, I feel like I stand a good chance to be in, in the running for those challenges. Cause I feel like toward that end, I need to win some challenges. Mm-hmm. So, Ooh, man. So Justin's making his case. And I remember so many awkward moments of just sitting at camp and knowing when you're talking. This is one of the moments that I was talking about of this is when I normally speak up, <laughs> start the conversation, do something, something to break the silence. And I just refused because I was just like, I'm in a good spot at this moment. But all it takes is me for, for me to say one wrong thing and then I'm gone. It really can happen that quickly with a vote that has this type of tension, you know, um, everyone's nervous. No one feels a hundred percent safe. Everyone is just like stomachs nuts. And so I'm like, I'm not doing anything. I'm going to let this go the safe route that it needs to, you know, cause I feel like that's my best play here. Um, and I think at this point is when I, I felt like I really lied for the first time oh. and that was to Justin because <clears throat> I could not give Justin the heads up that he was going home because he is too good of a player to know how to get himself out of situations that if I give him the heads up for him to go a hundred percent, I'm in trouble. So I was like, I cannot let Justin feel like, he can do whatever he wants because he's going home. I need mm-hmm. him to feel like there's a chance that he's still naturally going to stay and he doesn't need to do anything crazy. So I need him to feel that way. So that's that's when I, when I personally felt like I really lied for the first time. That's at least the first time I intentionally knowingly lied um, because I just left out a lot of truths and other conversations that I needed to. You know? Sure. Like when we were talking about game history, I wasn't lying to telling people I didn't play a game. I just didn't talk about the fact that I had played another game before. It was just that simple. So like, I felt like I was very creatively not lying and telling stuff. So this time I knowingly told a lie. I told the Justin, which sucked, but like, I just had to do it. Um, And it was getting to that point of the game. Day three, you got to start doing that kind of thing. Um, And I felt like it was, as long as it was just to Justin, he's going home and then my record is clean again, you know? Um, so I felt okay about doing that. Um, <laughs> that is not what happened when we went to the tribal council, though, because lo and behold, yeah. Justin had an idol. Well, um, he was given an idol. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, <laughs> so my <clears throat> my shock when he pulled out an idol, I was like, oh my gosh! But I was just like, okay, well. If Justin doesn't vote for me here, great, because he's kept his promise. You right. Know? It, I, um, I'm curious about that because it was brought up to you by both of your alliance members. Hey, what if someone has an idol? Hey, <laughs> what do we do? Should we have a plan B? And you shot them both down immediately. Mm-hmm. No hesitation. Mm-hmm. Like, well, then he wins and one of us goes. Boom. Because you knew... It wasn't going to be you that he voted for. So you were essentially just throwing them under the bus. (laughs) No. So I will actually politely disagree with that because I still didn't trust Justin to to do that. And I felt like if there is a scenario where he does vote for me, I wouldn't be surprised if it was an idle thing where he felt like he was going home because he would then assume that I'm voting for him. And so all bets are off again. So okay. I did not feel like in that scenario, I was safe. What I did know is that it was a risk I had to take. I why? wasn't throwing- it, because... Why? You had, another, you had another option. You could have sent someone home. Because in my head, I've convinced myself that this is the group that I need to go to the end with. And then on top Mary of that- Mary Ellen and Matt? Mary Ellen, Matt, the whole five of them. And so I can't have anyone else be on the chopping block because I can't reveal who is the first person to go in this group. I'm not about to throw out another name for a plan B because there is none for me. Justin is the only plan because- The only only people you would be throwing a name out to would be your two original as a band members because they're the only ones asking. Right, but I didn't want to make a distinction between Matt and Mary Ellen 
and I wanted this group to be strong. We had okay. a really good vibe going. This is the group that won the reward together as well. And yeah, I was, I know Trish wasn't in that group, but I had made heavy implications that Trish is still a part of this group. Mm -hmm. So I have dug a hole and yeah. based off of the game that I have played about personal connections, I'm like, I'm not about to sabotage one of these connections that I made within this five, and I'm not about to start turning us against ourselves. And so, yeah, it is, it's taking a risk of like, if Justin has something, we are screwed. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking bigger picture. We're screwed if immediately, if we start looking at who's next to go, because then we can just forget about this whole group and we're all going to start looking in other places for allies because we're all going to feel butthurt about who was in what pecking order. For me, the main thing I needed to do is that this needed to be a unified group going into this merge. Yes, it was the best thing for my game, but I also felt like it was going to be the best thing for everyone. And I know it's scary for everyone that, yeah, there's some way this could, you know, backfire, mm -hmm. but that's the game of Survivor. That can happen at any moment. And I feel like there was no point of throwing away this gameplay that we had going in this group for this off chance. And the off, now, what if, but if the off chance is that you get voted out, would you have regrets? Cause I mean, nope. I really, I really wouldn't because I, I was making a point to do things differently. Okay. If this was old William, I would have been trying to conniving, com coming up with some scheming plan and stuff like that. Whether it's throwing someone on the bus, throwing multiple people under the bus, trying to manipulate people, that is not the game I was playing for this season. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to be very clear cut and very communicative about what I was doing. I did not need to start another layer. I have already just told my first like real lie in this <laughs> game. I did not need to double down and start lying to the people I want to go far with on top of that and start ruining my integrity in the game. Um, so I know it's kind of a more nuanced, like Hail Mary of really putting a lot of faith in just to the, the personal connections that we go out home on, which are eventually going to fall apart anyways. I just know that this is a critical moment of us about to entering to merge. Mm -hmm. We need to feel unified. The last thing we need is us feeling like there's a bunch of bad blood right before we have a bunch of new options to work with. Yeah. So I was like, I need people to work with me and feeling like there's reason to bring me to the end. And if I give them reason to start pinning ourselves against each other, that's all they need to ditch me. So yeah, I think about... that makes sense for you. I think yeah. that makes sense for you. Um, I think it's stupid, but I think it makes sense. for you. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fair. Everyone is, I respect that though. Everyone's game is different and everyone has a reason yeah. for playing the way that they are. And that's the beauty of Survivor. Yeah, you know? for your game, um, it makes sense. And I see, um, yeah. and, and no matter, I mean, it got blown up and fucked up and there was bad blood anyway, because Justin mm -hmm. did play an idol. But I yep. see what you're saying that, it, it, you know, if you had said, okay, we'll vote for Mary Ellen, it, it just in case one of us is going to vote for Mary Ellen, and then she goes home instead, or there's a tie and a revote, and you have to vote her out, then mm -hmm. there's bad blood with Matt for you. Yep. Yeah. Yep, exactly. And so the relationships that I had built and the trust and integrity that I have built was maybe not a like a like a huge thing that I had going for me, but it's one of the few things I did have going for me in this game. And especially with these new bonds with Matt and Mary Ellen, it had never been more important than now. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so I was very aware that there was some silliness risk taking to this. But the thing is, is that you have to weigh this. There is a, whatever odds you want to say, let's say one in six odds of Justin having an idol. Mm-hmm. There is 100% odds of there being bad blood by creating a plan B. I would rather take the one in six shot of getting screwed, even voted out of the game, than taking the 100% shot of definitely messing with my long-term game. I mean, you could That's have thrown the... it on someone else. Like if it was Delaney or Trisha who voted for Mary Ellen, like your hands are clean. I just, I just, <laughs> I had to play the role that I had created for myself. And that role was someone who 
was not trying to spearhead crafty mm-hmm. manipulative strategies you know, yeah no I you're to be- that's yeah it, it should it should have been one of them that brought it up they they brought it up in a stupid way it, and if they had been thinking clearly one of them would yeah. have voted for for because if they're else. trying to get yeah if they're trying to get yeah. me to do it i'm not yeah. gonna do it just straight up yeah. so um but yeah so nobody Trish was goes home. Clearly. no Trish goes home which was if if justin was thinking no never mind i don't know i was about to say maybe if justin was thinking clearly he would re- reveal to me that he had an idol so we could work out something together mm. that would have encouraged me to do something more dirty but also i don't really think that that's actually the right thing to do i Mm-mm. still think justin did the right thing mm-hmm. um but <laughs> he also but got yeah. it right before he had no chance no chance oh, to tell anybody cool so i mean that does make sense then because i really felt like he did not i also see that's another thing i know justin and i know how he plays with an idol without an idol and i felt like justin yeah. does not have an idol so no, there's yeah, also that, that. Mm, yeah. there's there's all that a part of me and i was right technically technically uh, <laughs> it worked <laughs> so it's like you just didn't know I, that, that was so slimy that risk felt a little bit a little bit safer to take yeah yeah person. that makes sense that but makes sense. but in regards to the his promise to me um that was weirdly not a part of the equation okay um because i was not about to hedge my game on that promise which Mm -hmm. felt very up in the air so anyways from there on in i remember we all immediately wanted to talk to justin and justin immediately (laughs) needed a moment from himself and then he slowly talked to everyone one-on-one and waited to talk to me last which i was like oof (laughs) i told him and i had this plan going into this conversation I told him, it's like, dude, first off, I want to say congratulations. That was a great play. And I want to apologize, you know, that I lied to you. And I'm, it's just what I had to do. Not because I wanted to see you go home. It's just because I felt like that's what I needed to do in this game. And I felt like I needed to blindside you and not tell you the truth. And I'm really sorry that I had to do that. I want to amend things by saying that I don't expect you to not vote for me for the rest of the game. I want you to feel like you are personally off the hook for that. I want you to feel like you can vote for me in this game from now on. Like, please do not feel like you did. I voted for you. You should not feel like, like you owe me something at this point. You know, I think that's a great way of handling that situation. Yeah. I don't know what else I could have done. Yeah. Um, And I don't know if that actually made, good amends but i do feel like he did want to work with me past that but i don't know how much of that is because of what i said and how much because he literally had to because he had so little options so (laughs) regardless that's what i said so and again this is going off of my play which is just really trying to be communicative and straight about what i'm trying to accomplish in this game without needing to really be super crafty and stuff like that i'm trying to make it very aware of what i'm trying to do in this game by doing moves that are mutually beneficial for everyone that I'm working for. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not trying to screw people over. I'm trying to find ways to work with people that benefit me, but also provides a path for other people to succeed with that. Because I feel like I especially get screwed in situations that I purposely create. I'm not a boss and Rob <laughs> archetype for many reasons, but one of those especially is boss and Rob wins by making him the only way, you yeah. know? I am not that kind of person. People will get rid of me so quickly. If they feel <laughs> like I'm trying to create a game where they need me and me only, you mm-hmm. know? Um, so that's what I was trying to avoid. So now we're heading into the merge. Yeah. And at this point, I realize, oh my gosh, I am in one of the best spots in this game And I'm thinking literally with me and Delaney, me and Delaney specifically are in the best spot in this game Mm -hmm. at this moment. And that was incredibly amazing to feel, but incredibly scary because I knew that this is a one in a million. It's not a one in a million exactly, but it is an extremely rare opportunity and place to be in. And it's not going to last for really it's only going to last as long as i make it last if i let this just float and coast it will be gone immediately and so i was just like okay i have the power i have the angles i have the position that i need to be in this game 
what do I do with it? Because if I and do by, nothing with it, that's being passed on to someone else. By saying, you're saying you were, you were in the best position. Do you mean because you were kind of like, you could have floated to either side? You had Matt and Mary Ellen and you had um, Andy and, you know, whoever else on, mm -hmm. on Old But Grey. also, not just that, but I was in both majorities being in the original tribe majority, which mm -hmm. there was meetings of that original tribe trying to get back together. Uh -huh. And then also our new swap tribe, which had out of the swap tribes, the majority as well. Right. And that swap tribe had talked a lot about unifying together and staying strong and, and whatnot. So mm -hmm. no matter which way things were going, I had a spot in the game and I had a place See, this is what I'm talking about. I had many options at this point in the game to yeah. get me to like say final six, but that doesn't matter to me. What one gets me to the end? Because if my mm -hmm. goal is final six, then there's so many things I could do here, but yeah. that doesn't matter. It's not a big game about getting to final six. It's about getting to the end and winning. So I'm like, okay, what do I need to do here to actually win? And I literally talked to Delano on points like Delaney is like, we're the only two that's in this position. Like, mm -hmm. and I feel at this point that I can really trust Delaney because now with Trish gone, I feel like yeah. we need each other way more now. Um, so I know that's so cute. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I felt more confident in trusting Delaney all the way at this point. And I was like, okay. And at this point, now with that awkward three to two numbers gone, I feel way more trusting in Matt and Mary Ellen. And I'm looking at this yes. four as a strong four. And now Justin conveniently as a nice fifth, but also meat shield that I desperately yeah. need. Mm -hmm. So I was like, and that's another reason why I felt like I was in the best position because not only do I have majorities, I have great ins with people. I have reconnections to make with people like Andy. And I have the meat shields that I need in this game to go far. It's a matter of keeping those people in the game and sending them precisely home when I need them to. But the thing is, is that I know as soon as we got into that merge, the default plan was to get Justin out. He just survived mm -hmm. an idol. He was already the biggest threat. Justin's going home next if we have an easy vote. And I know that if that happens, I might as well be done because I lose a good percentage of what makes my position in this game so good. I lose out on one of the majorities. And also since obviously... I would not be down to make that happen. I'm losing out on the power of making whatever vote happens on this merge happen. So obviously I've let something slip through the cracks in general. And then also I just lost a meat shield and I'm in that power position I don't want to be in. So I see a lot of problems with Justin going home here. And oh gosh, there was so much talk in this merge about just reconnecting, figuring out what going on, because there was so much drama on this other tribe. And I was trying to get facts straight, and I didn't even get the facts straight. There was so much crap going on. So, like, Oh, yeah, they lied to you about the idol play. That's right. Yeah, my <laughs> Andy. And I felt so betrayed by Andy. Yeah. I really felt good with Andy, and I feel like he did legitimately feel good about me. But then I think just Mike and Jess got to him about mm -hmm. me. And Oh, my goodness. Um, so, if, William, if if... If uh, you could have done things differently with those talks right right at the merge, who would you have been pushing to be voted out at the merge? I think Mike. Mm. Mike or Jess. Because mm -hmm. I knew that they, at this point, I could not rely on them for being beneficial pre-existing relationships in this game because they have spent too much time away from me yeah and i know they have their own people at this point especially mike who picked his own tribe so i'm like yeah. i have little confidence that mike has a place for me in his game mike is also a threat so there is external more surface level reasons to get rid of mike yeah i think he was also the most openly scheming person in the game i feel like <laughs> yeah. he had a very bad poker face you could just <laughs> see the man plotting left and right it was like oh my goodness dude and so there was that thought and there was also jess just because um it would be still a jab at mike mm -hmm. and then it wouldn't it would though but you but it, but it would have you there's no way you could have known that no of course not so <laughs> 
there's that and then i'm just thinking that like it'd be a safer vote because maybe people are scared to vote on mike because of advantages Mm -hmm. but i i'm pretty sure i was definitely wanting to take out mike because i was trying to talk to delaney about what is our move here like what do we do to get ourselves to the end here what do we need to push and i'm pretty sure we were thinking mike um Mm -hmm. so um because i i know we both agreed that it is with in both of our best interests to keep justin I think we immediately came really? to that agreement. It's like, we need to keep Justin. Um, and I think the most surprising thing throughout all of this is that our, this is when me and Dan started semi-working together. Yes. Because yes. This, out there of all these conversations. Here. Yeah. Because <laughs> out of all these conversations, there was a lot of hesitancy that I could feel even with Andy, which was very disappointing. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of awkwardness with Mike and Jess. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I hate this. And it immediately made me want to stay when it came to what majority I'm going with. Like, man, I'm definitely sticking with my swapped majority yeah. because this other group is a mess. I'm having a really hard time reading them. And then out of nowhere comes Dan, which is a conversation yeah. I wasn't exactly thrilled for, but I was like, <laughs> whoa, Dan is legit. Dan yeah. is really giving it to me straight and suddenly i'm like wait i can work with him like, mm-hmm. I, can, I can use this and i it, it was i feel like we didn't set anything in stone but there was such a confidence in the air that like we got each other yeah and it, it was so random it was I it was yeah it. so uh, i really um, wish that would have worked out because it, it would have been so beautiful full circle right like. <laughs> right and see, and that also would have been an amazing full circle on me as a player from my learning from my past mistake of mm. setting that up and then not use, utilizing that. So, um, <laughs> so I um, I remember we did this challenge. What was the challenge? It was, oh, it was the nail game. Oh yeah. my gosh, this nail game. So I... I know this game well, because, you know, I also was with Bob Crowley yeah. when he taught Liz this game. You know, yeah. I played it. I'm also really good at, like, this weird, you know how, like, you have weird skills. I know for a fact that, like, one of my weird skill sets is, like, flipping a hammer perfectly. Really? Um, <laughs> yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I fidget with things a lot, and I have, like, a innate ninja ability to catch stuff that's falling in the kitchen um (laughs) weirdly specifically the kitchen you know um (laughs) but that's where a lot of things fall for some reason so like Mm -hmm. yeah i'm just really good at catching things like that that just fall out of the corner of the eye and so like the weight of a hammer and how it's weighted for me for some reason just feels so easy because Mm -hmm. some people would think that because it's lopsided it's harder but for me for some reason i feel like it's more predictable and mm-hmm. because of it's got such a clear biased weight to it yeah. that it's so easy to figure out how to throw this in a way where you catch it perfectly. But the thing is, is that like, I don't want to win the first immunity thing. And then also on top of that, I don't want to nail people's ham like nails in a way that people think that I'm targeting them. So I don't know what hmm. to do here. So I first start out by just failing, like yeah. purposely <laughs> failing really bad. Because I just didn't, I wanted to see, test the water, see what other people are doing. And then I, I think I started going for some more obvious ones, like getting Justin's, because he's the easy vote that we all know about and stuff like that. But things get, just kind of kept backfiring. People were especially petty towards my hits for some reason. Like a lot of people referenced that, like, I'm getting you back for this one, William. I'm like, mm. okay. <laughs> and then, so then I started um, just going in a circle. I, I then openly declared that I'm just hitting around the circle. And mm. if I'm hitting you, it's because you're the next nail up. I really try to make it as pointless as possible. Unfortunately, with that, I also revealed my hand that suddenly I was catching the hammer every time. And suddenly <laughs> I was hitting the nail almost every time. Yeah. And it all came down to, I'm sorry, people just sucking at this game. People are so bad at this game. It's not so that annoying. hard, guys. So <laughs> I'm just like, this, uh, this is where a little bit of my indecision and patience came in because it's like okay this game needs to move along I'm, I'm getting sick of this game we need to move this along people need to start getting out so then i start playing not even full potential but like 80 percent potential just to like show that like hey i can't hit freaking nails in this game and 
I think I was like third out. Like I did not last long because between apparently people just being very petty about the ones that I just happen to be hitting in a circle, which somehow <laughs> completely just, back, I don't know. I, I could not, there was, that was a lose, lose game for me. There was nothing yeah. I could do in that game where people were okay with me. I was like, okay, he hit you, but you're not mad at him. So I don't mm-hmm. know why that matters, whatever. That's okay. Because then I got to sit with Matt and Mary Ellen, who were the yeah. first and second people to go. So I was able to have a quick conversation with them about what we we're doing. And we both agreed that we needed to keep Justin. So like, mm-hmm. okay, so we got to figure out what to do. Unfortunately, we did not talk long enough to figure out what we needed to do from there. I don't think, but, um, and I think Mike was the next one to sit with you guys. So, um, which is a big problem, obviously, because yeah. he was probably the one that's targeting. So yeah. that was unfortunate. So after this, if there's one regret that I have, it's the fact that, which I honestly don't have any regrets in this game, which is a cool That's thing. Good. But like, yeah. but I really didn't know that we would, we got very accustomed to having like 15 minutes after a challenge to tribal to talk about stuff. And we had exactly zero minutes mm-hmm. to talk after this challenge. We immediately went from challenge to tribal. And that really pissed me off because this was my chance in this game to make a move. And I was ready. I was amped up. I was ready to start throwing Mike under the bus and making things happen. And I really felt confident that we could make it happen because I didn't even need to do anything fancy. All I needed to do was get my original majority of the swap tribe together of Justin, Mary Ellen, Matt, um, and Delaney to do it. And that's it. Done deal. And I feel like there's no reason for us not to do that. So (laughs) I just felt like all it would take was just a couple conversations. We put this together and then boom, we immediately are told yeah. to go to tribal. And I remember me and Delaney exchanging looks and she gave me that same dumb look that we had in that first vote with Samantha. I'm mm-hmm. just feeling scared to make a move and not mm-hmm. falling in the majority. And again, <laughs> I'm just like, we are the majority. Yeah. Why are we being pushed around by Mike and Jess yet again? Because so, Jess is her number one and you didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. Which I just don't understand. <laughs> That's fine. That's how the game works sometimes. But like, so I'm incredibly frustrated at Tribal Council because I know this is one of the worst things that could happen to my game Yeah. because I recognized opportunity. I recognized my position and it is falling apart before my eyes because putting Justin out of this game is a death sentence to my game at this point um so like obviously there's ways i can still win without justin but there is no path that i have figured out at this point in the game that has me winning without a x amount of meat shields yeah and losing one like i had just enough in my head about the amount of meat shields that i had in this game to utilize and Mm -hmm. losing one now would immediately leave me with nothing to utilize because i feel like also there needed to be more meat shields introduced like delaney was one that came in later in the game yeah. that clearly was a huge threat come mid-merge and i'm just like i know that i'm not one of the biggest threats in this game i am a threat in this game but i need to buy myself some time for some other people to introduce themselves as the real masterminds of this mm-hmm. game i was proud to recognize that I am not a mastermind in this game. I just have a good opportunity that I can use to take control of this game at this moment. But it's, I know it was just such a precious small moment that like, (laughs) if I don't take advantage of this, it's just gone. And that's just it. So seeing that waste away was incredibly disappointing. And I spent the whole time during the merge feast, catching up with people to try to figure out what the hell happened on the other tribe, Mm. rightfully so. Had I known that this was our only opportunity to strategize, I would have said, screw that. Let's just figure out what big move we need to make because we were all ready to make a big move. So. It was announced. It was, I hate it personally. The more strategic talk, the better. That's the only thing I care about. And the first vote of the merge. like, But I'm it like, was announced. Was- so when people were upset, I like half of announced. you were upset, half of you had heard, maybe, I don't know. If some people didn't hear, but it was like, this is the only chance you have to strategize. So do it now. So I was frustrated. Keep in mind, all love and peace. You guys are great. (laughs) If I'm going to be critical about one thing for you guys, it's this one thing. I don't understand how we couldn't have at least had five minutes 
to quickly debate stuff. Again, if it's up to me, all the time in the world, I had zero say in anything. Liza was the dictator of everything. <laughs> like, and I don't even ask you to point me. fingers. <laughs> I'm just venting because that's that's what I'm here to do. So. I, I would do the same. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, of course, I'm upset by this because I'm one of the people who is most affected by this negatively. Yeah. There's other people like Jess and Mike who extremely benefit by this yeah. move where they get to make what happens despite not being in the like majority here. So, oh man, not really frustrating me. And then the whole tribal council was a whole nutcase in itself. Justin has this <laughs> move with another another advantage that he doesn't relay to his whole majority and again i'm so frustrated because for some reason justin has this power which he uses but he also doesn't communicate with his natural he just communicates with matt and mary ellen and not me and delaney about hey i have something that could potentially protect me let's vote someone else out that's all it would have taken because i was ready to throw my vote on someone but i didn't have someone to throw my vote on i thought about throwing my vote on just just for the hell of it because at this point you know I don't think it's that big of a deal if I throw a random vote at Jess. You know, there's nothing that I need to prove to saving that relationship. And I want to make a, a move of some sort, even if it is just throwing out a vote to make something happen. Because I'm really upset by this idea of we're about to have a tribal council where it's just in all votes, you know, because mm -hmm. that's what I'm feeling. And so I'm like, I might as well throw a vote out there just mm. to say that, hey, Jess, I'm on to <laughs> you, you know? So. Just, I'm just about that. I, question. Go ahead. Just want to make sure that you know that you're not still mad about that. That you know that Justin didn't get that until about a second before tribal from Matt, and that he didn't even know what it was till he opened it at tribal council. I I do know that. Okay. <laughs> but if he made my thought is this: if he made the connection with Matt and Mary Ellen to convey a plan of some sort where they're voting for someone other than him he should have also gotten the other two people that he was relying on for numbers because mm. what's the point of getting I just realize, Mary Ellen? Yeah. I didn't realize that they had like discussed voting for Jess. I didn't, I didn't. Uh, well, because they, they didn't vote for Justin. They voted for someone else. They voted for Jess. Right. Yeah. So yeah. like if he got the word to them to vote for Jess, literally mm -hmm. all Justin had to do was look at me and say, vote Jess. And they'd be yeah. like, all right, Justin's got something. He, he's thinking something he already pulled out yeah i didn't want to vote justin i was admitting defeat at this point so all he had to do was just say vote jess Malibu, like whatever he had during to do. tribal he could have done that yeah, yeah okay because i was already mentally thinking about voting for jess so all i yeah. need is a nudge or an idea or a glimmer of like hey voting for, voting for jess has some legs i would have been all about that because that's <laughs> what would have saved my game if jess goes here it's a whole new game for me for many reasons, especially knowing what I know now, because then that cuts that tie off with Justin Delaney. So did, then did Justin play a shot in the dark there? No. I so it would so. have been you, Justin, Matt, and Mary Ellen. That's four. Justin still would have gone home. There's no way Delaney would have ever voted for Jess. Right. If that makes you feel better. <laughs> I guess I, I don't I don't feel I, I do feel disappointed that he didn't try to involve me yeah. in on that plan. To yeah, him. definitely. I didn't. I feel bad. But literally, my only two votes in the game were for Justin. I went to four tribal councils, yes. only <laughs> oh used two God. votes, and both of them were Justin. And Ooh. I didn't want to vote for him either. To, like, I, I did technically want to vote for him the first time, but I felt like I just didn't have any other options. Like, it literally was, I had my core crew, and there's one other person. Yeah. Oops, that person happens to be a friend. Yeah. I didn't like it. I did what I had to do. And in this situation, I super didn't like it, because I told Justin, game on, bro. We're working together. I need yeah. you in my game, and I'm taking you up on this offer. So I That's was very wild. By the vote. That is wild yeah. that those were your only two votes. That is so wild. <laughs> Oh my god. So this in this one of the good things that came out of this is that the score has been even. Uh, Justin voted out me <laughs> in the Bravo yes. challenge and I had voted out Justin albeit one failed attempt out of here and place better than him. So There's there balance in the universe though. It's yes. <laughs> now you can start it's over. It's a very small victory but I'll take it nonetheless. <laughs> um so at this point 
I'm even more frustrated because Justin actually had something and it didn't work. So th- mm-hmm. and now there was a hope that something actually could have been different to avoid Justin going home and saving my game. Right. But now that that didn't also pan out, now I'm feeling, oh, and then there was a random vote for me. So that's then, right. Yeah, so there is so much going wrong right now. Wait, and William, no, wait. Just could have gone home if you if Justin had yeah, done that because yeah. it would have been four four. Oh no. <laughs> yep. Yep. I guess Mike would have flipped his boat and and Justin still would have gone home. But that's so funny. I forgot Mike did that. What a fucking asshole. <laughs> See, the thing is, is that we would at least had a dialogue, right? People would have made yes. cases. We had a yes. chance. We there there would have been our five minutes to talk about yeah, stuff, you know. Definitely. And Justin knows how to talk. I believe in him. He could have turned that around. So mm. yes, yeah. So that's yeah. So my point is again proven that Justin should have involved me. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> so. Now I'm feeling real crap about what's going on. Uh, I, I, I feel very conflicted because it's like, man, I should feel some sort of victory of beating Justin in the game. It is nice for bragging rights, but like, I don't care because he in turn, he basically in turn sucked any joy there could have been gained by that, knowing that I'm now screwed without him. So it's just like, Cool. I'm glad that like I beat him at the cost of literally my whole game. So <laughs> like very little satisfaction in that moment for sure. I mean, and... it is it, it, it is kind of random that you are the one that goes next. It it didn't. It almost wasn't you, right? And and this is where oh, you yeah. have another connection with Dan, and you guys are going for Mike at that point, and yes. and other because... people are on board, like really on board, yeah. and then it's yeah. just scramble, scramble, scramble. So this, yeah, this is where, so, and with this challenge, this was also a really hard challenge. So I think Jess won by just was that? like two minutes. It was, was the, it the like, rolly ball thing. Yeah. yeah. That was, I was super fun, by the way, but holy cow, like, <laughs> that, that was hard. Um, so um, I really felt like I needed to win that challenge there. And I've never been in a spot in any game where I felt like I needed a challenge to win a challenge to stay in the game. I felt very, because I was not paranoid that like Mike wanted to me to be by voting. For, I know he thinks that's some legendary play of making me paranoid because he threw out a vote. I really wasn't that phased. It was more of just like, okay, it's shenanigans time already because people yeah. are just tossing votes. I don't right. care that it was me. I just care the fact that we had two vote, two extra votes for Jess and we had one willy-nilly vote for Will. So yeah. like um clearly there is a lot of moving pieces going on here that I don't understand. And it just added to my frustration of recognizing everything that I have foreseen literally from the night before of knowing that when that opportunity came I had to take advantage of it. And if I didn't my game would fall apart. And it's like it was so frustrating to literally see that play out before my eyes. And not being able to do anything about it. So from that point on, I'm throwing a lot of stuff out the window about caring so much about the more nuanced bits about the game. Because it is now do or die time for me. And I need to make a move regardless. Either I make a move, it backfires, I go home, whatever. Because at this point, I didn't feel like I was going home here. I felt like I was going home in the next two to three tribal councils without a doubt like yeah forget final six (laughs) i didn't feel like i was making final seven at this point so i'm like if i i need i whatever power i have left in this game i'll be it's probably half the amount of power that i had literally one trial before this like i can't believe how quickly it just went out the door (laughs) i need to utilize whatever i can so i immediately and that's when i see dan is like hey here's a new avenue for me let's work this let's do this mm-hmm. and he was so down because i remember we started talking and i could tell the unrest of not being confident in his position as yeah. like a like a core in anyone's group and looking to find a place and looking to make a move and i'm like that's what i've been trying to do since the merge yeah. let's make it happen and so <laughs> we're doing this and i'm targeting mike like i wanted to and i also felt like mike was the one who voted for me because mike was the first person to talk to me about my vote which really? I thought was huge. Yes, huge. He's just like, 
literally like this with his hands crossed, you know, yeah. doing I, he has that pose that he like he <laughs> yeah, does when he, he does. talks intently with people. He's like, Yeah, like that was so bizarre how you got like a vote. Like, what, if, what do you think happened? And he's like, suddenly I'm in like a psychological like session with Mike. And we just have not had this type of dialogue in this game before. So I immediately mm. know that like, okay, Mike really just was trying to like get me paranoid or whatever. So I feel pretty confident <laughs> it was Mike. And it's really no loss because I just feel like it was really silly. And I mm-hmm. had no intention of working with Mike before this, but now I really have no intention. And so I'm just like, okay. But something weird happened because, the, again, the vibes were just so weird during this whole time and so much shenanigans were happening. I am really disappointed in Andy because mm. Andy really built a great connection with me. And I was really trying to build that, reconnect with him during merge. And he really just would not allow that to happen. And there was this moment where we went off to get water together and I told him now's the time we need to make a move because I'm trying to connect to him as like a, like we, us two, we're big targets right now. We Mm -hmm. need to make something happen because it's going to be one of us either now or next. And he's like, absolutely. Uh, No, I'm sorry. He doesn't say absolutely. That's what he should have said because it makes the most (laughs) sense. He's like, hmm, I think we should like play it safe is literally what he told me. And I'm like, what? Like, yeah. Like, I don't think we like, like we just stick with our like original, like majority being like our original tribe, you know, and just like play it safe. I'm just like, I'm just dumbfounded. Yeah. I'm just like, Andy, you have to be smarter than this. Like, I feel like you think I'm stupid. (laughs) <laughs> and then I thought about that too long. And I literally thought that he thought that I was stupid and oh. he was playing with me. And his logic that he was trying to tell me made so little sense that I literally started thinking, holy crap, Andy's the one that voted for me. Because oh, no. Andy just wants me gone at this point oh, that's because he right. doesn't trust me. You did Cause think he, that. <laughs> because he, because I'm just like, if I'm, as this is happening, literally with every minute, I'm feeling like if there's a meter of like Will going home, it is going up by the minute. Yeah. And when this moment with Andy happened, it was fulfilling that thing that like, I'm going home this round. Because basically, if I, f- I felt like there is reason for me to go home, and if there's other stuff that doesn't add up, it means that there's shenanigans going on. And it means because it's not because there is craziness going on it means that there's a plot against me and i'm Mm -hmm. not in on the organized part of this thing and so to me it looks crazy but that's because i'm not in on it so if i'm witnessing things that doesn't make sense i'm perceiving it as it's because i'm being left out here and i'm about to be blindsided and so when andy had that conversation with me that's when it went from like 50 to 60 percent feeling like it was me to like 80 to 90 percent feeling like it was me so then that's when I started getting really intense with people and like yes we're doing this right we're doing this and then I leading up to tribal as like we're like being called into tribal I'm like touching base with people and I could just tell that it wasn't going well it was going well at one point but I feel like there was a lack of closure like I definitely felt like I was being entertained. People were listening to people were offering me other solutions as well, which I think is a key point. Mm-hmm. They were not just saying, yes, well, yes, well, that sounds great. Will that sounds great. They were offering me counterpoints and stuff like that, which if you ever lose counterpoints and stuff like that, if everyone becomes a yes man, it's because you're going like, mm. they're just trying to get you to shut up. So that way they can see you out. So the fact that people were still engaging me with me that way, it was great. So, but I was, very like proud of myself to recognize these really nuanced things such as me being the only one to touch base with people as we're walking to tribal and recognizing that no one was coming to me being like so we're voting mike right like no one was doing that with me Mm -hmm. and so i felt like it's gonna be me like walking to tribal i was that meter had now gone to like 95 percent and really like there wasn't anything that anyone said in tribal that made me feel like it was more like me, but it didn't take much for me just to feel a hundred percent convinced that it was me. And now once I've reached this point of feeling a hundred percent convinced it was me, this is when I started to feel like 
man, I wish I had that shot in the dark. Okay. Like, I really like, cause there's no other hope for me. Like this yeah. is where you play the shot in the dark because there's no hope for me. And so I feel at this point very betrayed because it started off with Andy yeah. feeling like weirdly left out and then let down by the rest of the people that I was relying on for this vote. And then I feel like the only person who truthfully didn't let me down completely at this point was Matt. And it just by happenstance, not having the chance to touch base with him at the last second with him. So he didn't have to do anything weird with me. So that mm. gave the advantage to him because I looked to him. It was because it was it's so weird how it was so cool how it happened because everyone was getting up. I went to the very front of the people coming into the tribal because I thought, okay, they have had idols in tribal before. So if there is an off chance that there's an idol in tribal, I need to be the person to get it. And by doing that, I need to be the first person in line. Mm -hmm. And I also want to be the person on the back right of the the sitting arrangement so I can see everyone get a better read on everyone and just see what everyone is doing. I needed that visual vantage point and I needed that chance to get something if there was something they got. I thought I saw something on the ground and I was getting excited until once I started walking in, it was literally just a plastic spoon. And I was like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting there and I'm just feeling utterly hopeless, like trying to find some peace and everything and just feeling like I couldn't find it because I just feel like I didn't do it wasn't about me doing something wrong. It was about me not being able to like, capitalize on moments that I knew were crucial. You know, it felt like a really lame way to go out and I wasn't happy with it. Um, and then, so I'm the last person in the seating arrangement, meaning I'm the last person to vote. Second to last is Dan and third to last is Matt. And so we're getting up to vote and Dan, second to last vote gets up. And now for the first time, there is an uninterrupted view of me and Matt to each other. And at this point, feeling just the the tension and just worry of like I'm about to be voted out this sucks at this point I wanted to better prepare my mentality and just being like I just want to know if I'm going at this point can I can we just put it to rest I feel literally 100% confident but can I just get a confirmation put a book in on that so I can already start feeling some sort of peace and so mm -hmm. I can start you know preparing my like speeches or whatever like and I look to him and I just mouth the words like isn't me and he didn't even say yes he just told me do you have the shot in the dark and in that moment i was like damn it really do be me because he just <laughs> skipped the part of saying yes and just the dude if you got it play it because there's no other hope for you like no other hope it's not even a split vote like it, it not only got confirmed that it was me but it was like there was no chance it wasn't going to be anyone else so i'm like yeah. Oof, ouch um and because i trust in matt to tell me the truth so i feel like that's why i reached out to him because i feel like he would give it to me straight and so i told him no and then like without hesitation he just went in his bag and he got his shot in the dark and he slid it across the bench to me behind everyone's backs um i hope the cameras caught it because it was so I hope like so too <laughs> such a quick moment but then i was just like oh my gosh i have a shot a little shot in the dark and then suddenly this like feeling of hopelessness and like frustration, everything just gone away. Cause now this went from a game that just kind of escapes me um, despite knowing what I need to do to a game where now it's just fate. Either I'm meant to be in this game or I'm meant to go here. And it's because of this shot in the dark, you know, this is now my game. If I'm meant to be in this game, this will give me this chance and that will be great. If not, c'est la vie, it wasn't meant to be. And I was more okay with that ending than the ending where I just go out without being able to do anything. I had some very small sense of power remaining to do something, to try to stay in the game. And that little bit meant so much to me. Um, and I was very emotional when I went to go vote mm -hmm. and then also not vote, choose that. <laughs> And um, the, oh my gosh, the, the part of this, and I'm not truthfully that many, because again, I'm at peace because of fate, but I literally, because it was fate, you know, I really just wanted just to pick something and not think about it. And the first thing that I picked up was the safe one. 
but then I thought Fuck. of gaming it <laughs> and I was just like, ooh, but you know, if I'm production, there's probably some way to differentiate the one that's safe and the not safe. So then I started looking at them all and trying to figure out mm-hmm. there was one that was slightly different than the others. And I was like, ooh, this one looks a little different. And I put the first one down that was safe. And that wasn't safe. For me. So I was literally so close for staying in the game. Wow. But not without making some good TV in the voting booth and some good TV as I was getting voting out um, about everything. And just seeing people witness me getting a second shot in the dark yeah. is just... In, I don't know if that's ever been done before anywhere. Right. I'm talking like any like live game or online game because the only way this happened is because we <laughs> represented the shot in the dark with a physical piece. And without that physical piece, there's nothing to transfer that would theoretically be against the rules that weren't firmly established because it was a gray area. And yeah. what's so great is that I know the Jeff Probst rule, which is when working with gray areas, you don't ask for permission you ask for forgiveness so i know that not only did i want to make this a tv moment but i had to i need <laughs> to make this a moment that you cannot write out of the story yeah because if i don't they're going to take it away because it doesn't really follow the rules it's got to be cool it's got to be great and if i make it a moment and go out of this booth before they have a chance to rethink it it's going to stick and that's what happened they just let it slide and i think i literally left that voting booth with uh sam who was running the voting booth at the time just dumbfounded yeah it's like wait you you played that for me so how do you have a second so like yeah. it was so iconic that she was the one in the voting booth to yeah. witness that uh <laughs> awesome so to see everyone's faces yeah when i played a second shot in the dark and they kept well, talking dude. about it it's going to be all uh, like episode nine or whatever the episode oh after you vote it out. It's going to be a big part of the beginning because they just don't shut up about it. And then Matt's like, uh, it wasn't me. You want to see mine? And he's like, because <laughs> Justin apparently had given him his. I don't know. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So I, I think it's funny that like I came into this game saying that I wanted to give people power in this game to trust them. And the last action was that done for me. Yes. And um, yeah, that was just such a cool moment. I felt better about going out in that way. And it definitely lessened the blow of the situation that I was going into that tribal council with. Okay, we have like 10 minutes left before I have Mm -hmm. to go. Um, (laughs) And I do have to go. And I I am neither surprised nor disappointed that... (laughs) You have almost gone three hours now. <laughs> I, I hope that I've made it worth the time and it hasn't been just me rambling. Like, <laughs> No. No, it's always great to talk with you. Well, man, this is this has been a blast talking to you about everything. I really yeah, definitely. Time. Thank you for and you breaking the record. Um, I think only <laughs> Becky from the season two has a longer uh, interview than you. Woo! And I could have gone into like, um, like personal, like fun anecdotes and stuff like that. There's so many fun stories that I didn't yeah. get to talk about, but it just comes down to this being a truthfully really fun game. Mm-hmm. That's not meant to be talked about in three hours. And no. really, I hope that I just, you know, I gave you a little in depth of what was going in my head through the strategic moves. And if you want to hear more about my fun experience, feel free to talk to me and I'd be happy to share, share, you know, all the fun stories and things that happened, but highly recommend this game to people you know i have very high expectations when it comes to these types of games and you met and exceeded those so yay thank you so much william (laughs) for for giving us three hours of your time of course thanks for taking the time with me and all the work that you put into this game in general oh thank you you're welcome (laughs) (laughs) that was a long one (laughs) william definitely holds a record for longest podcast this season um but it was great talking to will uh be sure to check out william's ponderosa video on surviving main youtube channel and check in with us on sunday for episode 10 streaming live at 7 p.m eastern on our youtube channel Thanks for listening.